Welcome to Screencast, Kind of Funny's only entertainment-based podcast where we come together and talk about movies, TV shows, and streaming services. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are streamed live Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, and sure. Why not? We, after we, we, Games Daily. I no longer say a time. Now it's just after Games Daily. Tim said in his um, <laughs> in the message, the update video, that we're consistently inconsistent or yeah. something like that. That's perfect. And sure. that's by design. So everyone, sure, sure. there's a method to our madness. <coughs> this week, we are being streamed on Thursday because tomorrow, we are doing Bad Boys for Life in review. <sighs> Ride together. One last time. Mm-hmm. One last time. Do you think it's really one last time? No. I think if this movie does well, which I assume it will, they're going to bring him back for Bad Boys uh, Old Person's Home. <laughs> because let me tell you, Martin Lawrence in, this, in these trailers <laughs> looks like someone just propped him up with uh, popsicle sticks. He's trying his hardest. He's doing great. Uh, I if can't you wait. don't have time to watch us live, you can watch us on YouTube or Rooster Teeth. Uh, if you don't want to watch us and just want to hear our voices in your ears, you can go to your favorite podcast services uh, like Spotify. Which, like, I That's remember cool. we had said that it was on there, but the other day... I, I looked it up. Yesterday I looked it up. And it was like, oh shit, look, there's Screencast. There we are. Yeah. Yeah. Also, please go and rate it. Give it a thumbs up. All positive stuff makes us look like a bigger deal than we are. It's true. You know what I mean? Go ahead and support us that way. If you want to support us financially, you can go to patreon.com slash kinda funny and support it any tier. Uh, the bronze tier gets it so you answer your questions. And boy, have you guys been coming out to answer the questions. Thank you so much. It's awesome to open that spreadsheet and see an absurd amount of responses. Nice. Hard, hard when it gets the, to these shows that are probably going to be a little long. So I'll try to get as many as possible. A uh, little housekeeping. You can go to kindoffunny.com slash store and check out our new stuff. I don't will, think we have any. any will stuff. we have new stuff next week? Oh, oh, a little teaser. Has Tim maybe been wearing one of them? Oh. What's he wearing? I don't know. Now I'm, now I'm intrigued. It's that like black and white Portillo shirt. Oh, I, want that I shirt. like that shirt a lot. We, we have shirt. several of them. I actually Can have, I have two. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you give me one? <laughs> yeah, I I do this I every right time now. we get. She walks samples, around and hands them to people, and I yeah. like dish them out by. And size. you're like, I don't want any. I want one. <sighs> All right, and we also want to thank Patreon producer Al Trabsman. Uh, this show is brought to you by our sponsors this week: Upstart and Manscaped and Butcher Box. But more about that later. Ooh. And the last thing is. This is uh, our anniversary month, so we're celebrating the whole month. At the end of the month, we have a stream. If you want to help support, uh, help us build out the studio and keep the company growing, you can go to patreon.com, either Kind of Funny uh, Games or Kind of Funny. Yeah. Do you want your name on the wall in the studio? Mm Mm-hmm. I think you do. Should we get a CNC laser that etches it on there forever? (laughs) Just an idea of throwing it out there. Something to do. (laughs) (laughs) I like like anything that's a CNC machine. Um, What does that mean? CNC. I don't know what that stands for, actually. Or what is it? I, is is it not have something like carbon? No. I don't so know. what's a CNC machine? No, no, a CNC machine uh, L- basically like does whatever whatever shape or yeah. design you want. You can put want. like an Illustrator file in, and it'll go. Th- th- it, laser so it's like it. a cricket. <laughs> have you ever had it? Yeah, like yeah, a, a cricket? cricket is like a one for paper. Got it, got it. Uh, yes. But CNC originally <laughs> used to be uh, an arm that would essentially copy a movement that you would put into it. So hmm. you would get it and like do calligraphy, and then it would m- make it bigger and do it on wood with a drill. Mm, yeah. Interesting. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it's cool really like interesting that. stuff. Oh, what does CNC stand for? I'll look uh, it up right now. Welcome to mechanics with Kev. <laughs> uh, let's get right into our big topic Woo! this week: top ten movies of 2019. Dun-dun-dun. Woo! Dun-dun-dun. Real, really. I'm excited. excited because I don't know. We've like vaguely talked about things that will be on our list, but I don't know what's on your guys' list. Mm-hmm. Nick was trying to figure out my list a little bit earlier. Yeah, we were going through earlier, and I was asking her, was this on your list? She goes, no. Was this on your list? She goes, do you want me to just tell you the list? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I want to guess, and yeah. then I want to talk about it on the show. It, okay. The craziest thing of my list is that throughout the year, it is like I've been like, it's for sure going to be this. Yeah. And it's just constantly I've been like, I guess I was wrong. It's, yeah. uh, it's not for sure going to be this. And like... E- up until not too long ago, I was like, I know what my number one is. Damn. Counting my chickens a little early. Really? Yeah. My number one's easy. Yeah? Yeah. Well, don't tell me well, yet. We're not starting with number one. We're starting with we number gotta ten. build this. Actually, I do want to, I'm going to do honorable mentions. Oh, I haven't built my honorable mentions. I know. And that's I can go through like, my letterbox. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Little Women that didn't make my list, but damn. Oh, that's it heartbreaking. Was, it was very very difficult because like it this this what a goddamn year for movies 
Um, and then my other honorable mention is Fast and the Furious, Hobbs and Shaw, a movie that I did not expect to have me you really hysterically had a lot of fun. laughing you really had a in lot the of fun movie theater. Movie. I had so much fun. <laughs> he goes to the car, Nick. So oh my and there's just a hole. And he yeah. takes his hat and he's like, Ugh, and it's just like cartoon. I'm mad. Yeah, it's I'm good mad. stuff. It's, I really enjoyed it. It didn't make my list, but both of those were very close and very difficult to, uh, to cut. To cut. Anybody else have any honorable mentions? My honor, I think I have two, maybe three honorable mentions. Dr. Sleep, man, I had really low expectations for, and I liked it way more than I thought I would. Yeah. I thought the girl that was in it, and I don't remember her character's name because mm-hmm. I haven't thought about sure. this movie in, since we watched yeah, it. a month and a half, two yeah. months. Um, she, her performance was so good. Mm-hmm. Incredible. The, the overall story for Dr. Sleep, I thought was an awesome way to continue the story. Yeah. They... Had some issues that I didn't love with uh, making certain scenes where I was like, hmm, hmm, yeah. hmm. But I liked that way more than I thought I would. Yeah. Um, and then the other one that I thought was like really fun and not top 10 worthy, but I liked it was Ready or Not. Oh, yeah. Uh, a great movie. Yeah. If so you, much fun. If you liked what you saw in the trailer, then it's, it's definitely worth watching. Uh, Plus our, Adam Brody. Who doesn't oh, yeah. Brody? See, I have a top 12 list. So I'm trying to figure great. out Just the last cause, three. Oh. Which I want to uh, shave off. I think I'm going to give. I think I'm actually going to do this. I you think, only have to shave off two. I know. I think I'm going to shave off yesterday, oh. which I really liked. I, I really liked it. Liked I it rewatched too. it over Christmas. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, uh, I had but I'm some major. Shave it off a list. Real quick, with yesterday, I had some major issues, and like we're going to try to be as spoiler free as possible. Yeah. And this is a little bit of a spoiler for a joke that's in yesterday, but sure. I feel but like it's yesterday, not a plot spoiler. yeah, is a small enough movie. But like when they were like. Can I get a Coke? And they're like, what's Coke? I was like, <laughs> I hilarious. audibly gasped yeah. in the movie theater where I was like, no, I can't live that in this was, world. That was part of my favorite thing was that you, you just in the movie. I mean, it is a bit of a spoiler, but it's kind of fun. It's, it's a fun spoiler. Is that in the movie, there's there's things that the other things other than the Beatles that have disappeared. Yeah. And he, he's the only person that knows. Yeah. And some of them like that, like Coke. I would be like, well, that's it for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I gotta go. No Beatles, no one, Coke. Yeah. This is the darker time. Tell me I got no Led Zeppelin and I'm jumping off a bridge. I feel um, like they brought that joke back. Enough and was placed correctly that it wasn't like super. I only remember it happening one other time besides that. Happens three times, including the Beatles. No, no, four including the Beatles. Oh, oh, I yes, I remember the. the It happens at the very end. All of them targeted directly to me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, all of them. Anyways, Uh, uh, my other honorable mention, I think, will be. Shit, it's hard. See, this is the hard one. I, I'm going to go ahead and give it to uh, honorable mention John Wick Chapter 3, oh. which uh, would have made my list, but there's a lot of really good movies, but I really love that movie, and I think as a pure action movie, that series cannot be beat, and I cannot wait for Tim to watch it. The uh, the it's scene that he we... hasn't seen any of it. Although I thought that with Bad Boys, and he does not like Bad Boys, so whatever. No, he will... F- like, the action is so good. It's, it's not even that the action's good. The fighting is so insanely well choreographed that like there's no way I think the no cinematography way. is really beautiful too. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. But uh yeah, the 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 scene where they're fighting in the hallway the knives. of knives it's ridiculous. is just so fun. I I I don't know how that could be beat. Uh, With, like well, when it comes John to Wick those... chapter 4. They'll figure it out. Yeah. Woo! And the Matrix okay. whatever the hell that new one is, which I assume he's not in, hopefully. But he'll probably no, he be is. in. Is he in it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he's said he would be, but we'll see how things pan out. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it, no, mentions. he is in it because they're launching both on the earth. They're both releasing on the same day, aren't they? Oh, that's right. I think they're going to punt one of them. Both. John Wick Chapter 4 oh, and, and The Matrix. Matrix. They're going to punt one of them. Yeah, and I'm sure it's one. The Matrix and it may never get made. Oh, I no, hope it does. The Matrix will get made. I think they'd probably punt John Wick because I feel like The Matrix, the studios are going to look at that and be like, nothing's going to fuck that up this weekend. That's got so much juice coming into that. Yeah. That had juice 10 years ago. That's fair. That's fair. Let's see what Avatar does too. Avatar 1, yeah. 2, and 5. Uh, yeah, so that's, and then, of course, uh, there's a ton of movies that are great that I'm still, uh, I still need to see that I was just waiting to come to, uh, to video. Uh, I'm sure you guys, most of these will be on your list. Uh, but I have not seen the movies that I want to see. Uh, Peanut Butter Falcon, 1917, uh, which I'll see in the theaters because I want to see that one in the theaters. Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Parasite, um, and Honey Boy. And the last black man in San Francisco. I want to see all those movies still before the Academy Awards. Um, and then, of course, special place in my heart for the old Downton Abbey movie. Oh, I haven't watched any Downton Abbey. I just want to see what y'all's <laughs> reaction with that was. I was because I, I watched. Did I watched you watch half it? of that series. Did you watch it? Do you like the it? movie? No. 
Oh. Uh, the the but, movie is one of those hilarious movies that came out, and it's like obviously like a two hour long episode of the show. Yeah. But the trailer for it's hilarious because nothing happens in Downton Abbey. It's just people talking. So it's just people talking. It's like randomly. It's, it's, it's people talking being like, the queen's coming. The queen's coming. The queen's coming. And like, a, we need a, more a, dishes. Like tr- we don't have any dishes. <laughs> Downton Abbey. I, and it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking shit about Downton Abbey. I, like I know that, No, I liked amazing. Downton Abbey until like a character left, and it was like, well, fuck you guys. Yeah. Cool. I think that's the only episode I've seen. That's wild. <laughs> that sucks. If it's uh, all right, well, let's start. Nicholas, what's your number 10? My number 10 for me is Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, it's a movie that would have ranked higher, and I like this movie a lot. I'm obviously, I love the story. That it's, I love that it's based on real events. I love that they did it accurately. Um, they gave you a really good sense of like who Carol Shelby was. Um, and, uh, and and all of his team and the racers. I think the dynamic between, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Batman, Christian Bale, and Jesus, why am I blanking on people's Matt names? Damon. Matt, Matt Damon, Damon yeah. is really cool. And this movie is, not, if nothing else, go see it if before it's out of theaters, if it's not already, in, in the biggest screen, the loudest fucking thing you possibly see. Because the racing in this is so well done, and it's so cool and so crazy that it's worth seeing on the big screen. Last I checked, it was still um, in theaters at very few, like, yeah, maybe yeah. once or twice a week. If you so. if you have a great home theater setup, go for it. But if not, try to see this on a bigger screen because it, it demands that. And if you're yeah, and if you if you're a fan of racing at all, you you know the story of Ford versus Ferrari and, and the 24 hour race Le Mans. It's just really well done. That sounds really so fun. cool. The 24 hour race at Le Mans. At Le Mans. Love it. Yeah, it, that's still on my list because yeah. I'm trying to see all of the Oscar nominated pictures. So I need to see that The Irishman and. You'll you'll appreciate it. Have you seen it yet? I haven't. You'll appreciate yeah. it just for based off of all the engineering because they go really deeply into like obviously they were trying to build a car that could put that could beat the Ferraris, right. and it's so fascinating to see. One of the things that that I thought of you about was that the, they call it the uh, the Ford GT40 was the name of the race car. It's that iconic badass yeah. like fastback yep. looking Ford that you see in the movie. Um, and they call is it that the, the same car that's in or is it a similar one that's in Bad Boys One? Oh no, it's um, that's different. That, okay. That's the Shelby Cobra. Shelby worked on this. Okay, got it. Shelby yeah. made the Cobra first, uh, based on I think a chassis for a British car, and he sold that separately. And because they were beating the Corvettes, that's what Ford Ford came to them and said, "We need your engineering expertise to beat the supercars." Because there's tiers at the Le Mans, yeah. like there's different the different like, classes of racing, and they wanted to build the basically the I think that's it's the open class, whatever it is. Basically, we can do whatever the fuck you want, and it's mm. fast as shit. Um, but they call it the GT40, and if I'm not mistaken, in chat, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but I think in the movie they call it the 40 because it had to be 40, I want to say centimeters off the ground for clearance sake to mm-hmm. be cleared by Le Mans. And so they, ca- they they called it the 40, mm. but what they did was they shimmed the, they took these little like, like wooden shims yeah. and they shimmed the, the shocks. Or like the, the springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it so it would be forty, upright. and then when the guys were done, they pulled them out, so it would drop to the ground. Because <laughs> cool. they were like, "We can't drive this yeah, fast yeah, yeah. at that high clearance, yeah, or else yeah, the car yeah. will literally lift catch up, air yeah. and lift up and flip." Because they're yeah, driving at so fucking cool. two hundred miles an hour yeah. down the straightaways. It's, it's fucking crazy. insane, and it's just it's just cool to see the strategy and the engineering and the 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 teams that have to go into something like that because they have to race in teams. So you have to have another person. You you do three hours, you get out. They do three hours, you go sleep if you can. It's cool. It's That's just so awesome cool. to see that, and and they nailed the the cinematography and the, the period, so it was really cool. Acting good too. Yeah, I mean, it's Matt it's Damon a little. Brings it. Matt Damon's good. Um, uh, uh, Christian Bale plays uh, a very kooky character who was this iconic racer whose name is this kid. I think it's I want to say Les Miles. No, it's a cool name if that's his name. Yeah. Maybe anyway, he's, miles, though, you know? he's very British, very Cockney <laughs> accent, and I think he overdid it just a little bit, which is why this would have ranked a little higher because this kind of it comes off a little. A little allegorical, and when mm-hmm. it should be a little bit more realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's why I wouldn't rank it a little higher. But it's definitely worth seeing, and it's really really cool. Um, but if you if you really really want to see a great movie based on it, then just watch the Twenty Four Hour War, which is a documentary that actually has real footage of like people racing in this race back in the day. It's really cool too. Right. That's Love what it. I would say. It's still on my list. That is one of the movies that I haven't been able to see this year. Um, Joey, what's your number ten? My number ten. Before I, Ken I was Miles. Train. That's what it is. Thank you. Not less miles. Do it. Less cool. My number ten is Book Smart. Oh. oh, really? That low? Yeah, I know. Which I feel like is controversial, because um, I really liked the movie. I know I, everybody seemed to track liking it way higher than I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought Olivia Wilde did, was great at directing. I think the performances are really good. I think it's a fun take on like teenage movie yeah. without being like retreading old ground too much. The soundtrack's great. Billy Lord in the movie is honestly like my favorite part. <laughs> so, so good. good. <laughs> it made me like, it's funny because before that, my only exposure to Billy Lord was in uh, Star Wars. 
and yeah. she's such a like little cameo. Yeah, the, her little cameos are so small yet have so much attention. Like I remember the first one being like, "Who the hell is that?" Yeah. Later finding out, and, and uh, I I didn't know anything about her, but yeah, mm-hmm. watching the, this movie, it was like, "Oh, she is awesome." Yeah. Yeah. She was my favorite part. Um, yeah, I just I thought it was a really fun movie, and I think it had a good spot on my top ten. Yeah. I assume that you guys also have it on your top ten. It is oh, fact yeah. on the okay. list, yeah. Perfect. It is a little higher though. Okay. We'll talk about it when we get there. Definitely. Okay. Um for me, my number ten is the farewell. Mm. Oh that's so huh? low. <laughs> it, it's just it's just it's I a get it. really there's, like I love how much we're judging each other. Yeah, right no, now. I, <laughs> but there's so around. many good movies out there right yeah. now, a lot guys. Of good movies. Uh but yeah, the farewell, it's just it's a really, really well done movie that uh, like who knew Aquafina was that good, you know? Yeah. She, like, takes that role so, like, she commits to it and is so intense the entire time. Yeah. Um, And it's it's a really cool story that, like, left me being like, wow. Like, it's cool to see a window into a different culture that, like, I don't understand. Yeah. It's like, I, you know, the whole movie is based off, oh, we're not telling my, gra- uh, my grandma that she's dying. Mm-hmm. Right. She has um, cancer. Yeah, she has cancer. But we're going to do one last family reunion where we're pretending it's a wedding. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just like that seems like such a weird thing to not like in, in involve that person in that decision. Yeah. And yet uh, like you kind of see the benefits of it. And it's just it was it's a magical movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, there's a the the, the la- one of the last shots. Eh, yeah. I, it's the last shot. The last shot is so heartbreaking. so heartbreaking and powerful. And yeah. it's just it's very well done. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll echo that as well. It's on my list as well. Um, and I just think. It's one of those where really a window into the culture is always a hard thing to do, especially for Americans, because we tend to be a little closed off to outside cultures. But having her be the sort of Americanized Chinese mm-hmm. uh, person coming in and going in, but still having that touchstone to the older culture and bringing the audience with her, I thought was so tastefully done and so well done. And there was still – what I liked was that she had still the criticisms of – of that sort of Eastern culture, and she came out at it with Western sensibilities. Mm-hmm. But then by the end of the film, you sort of see both sides, which I think yeah. is really because I I went in thinking this is fucked up. There's no way if I had cancer, I might be able to tell. <laughs> but then the mom has that great line where she goes, "We have a saying in China, people get cancer and they die." And you're like, oh, that seems like a simple saying, but it's an oversimplification of if you tell them, they give up on life. Right. Yeah. If you don't tell them, people will just live forever. And by the way, that grandma's still alive. Well, don't ruin that. <laughs> Well, I mean, at the end of the film, like, I'm no, like, I know, but, like, yeah, yeah, literally yeah. now, still, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, I crazy. thought that was so cool when it yeah. ends, and it's like picture of the grandma, or is, is it a video of her doing the like? It's oh, a video yeah. of her doing the tai chi. Yeah, the tai chi, huh? Just cool. Um, and they, <laughs> yeah, and like the whole thing of like, this is our, we take on that burden for them because we can spread it across more people of like knowing that this is coming mm. for them instead of putting it all. On I know, and I thought that was really cool. Where it was like, don't put, yeah, I thought that was so well done. And, it, and it's just, it's so interesting because it's so hard for me as a person who hates authority yeah. to like watch older people telling younger people what to do and be like, I would, I would like fuck you. But the, and she has that, she has that sort of rebellion originally. But I feel like you yeah. have the opposite too. A bunch of younger people making a decision for an older person. Yeah, yeah. Which is it's, but it's fascinating. Yeah. And they all, and the, but they do it out of love. They do it because right, they exactly, revere her yeah. and because they respect her and like. And it's just, and then but you have those wonderful moments where the guy's supposed to get married. He just starts crying, and she's like, "Why are you crying?" <laughs> and then she like tells him to get closer to yeah, 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 so yeah. It's so cute. I also really liked the scene where it's and the poor fiance that doesn't speak any Chinese. <laughs> she's so confused. She's so confused the whole time. Um, the scene with Aquafina and her mom of like when Aquafina is like finally they're having that conversation of like you took me out of this world and you took me and like kind of ripped this from me and like how it r- shaped like her entire life and how yeah. she felt like robbed of this like family life that she didn't get to experience because she went to America and like yeah. dealing with the duality of like being a first generation um, American and stuff like that. So good, man. I, I love when they bring the, they go to visit the dad on it or the grandfather on his uh, anniversary of his death and someone brings him cigarettes and the, and the grandma's like, don't put it, give him cigarettes. He quit, like, are, he quit smoking. He quit smoking. like, what are, you, what are we going to do now? He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. He can smoke if you want. No, weren't they like, no, he started behind your back <laughs> in the last like three months. Yeah. 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 So funny. So funny. Uh, Sorry for the spoiler, everyone. It's not really a spoiler. For no, me. it's fine. It's fine. But it's still, it's a beautiful movie. I Check just was shocked when I learned that. Yeah, it was very shocking. Um, all right. I guess I'll do my number nine. Marriage okay. story. Number nine. Have you, t- what was your number 10 again? The Farewell. Oh, The Farewell. That's right. Yeah. I'll do my number nine. Go for it. The Marriage Story. I have not watched Marriage Story yet because my wife had such a negative reaction to it that it threw me off. Is it worth it? it? It's great actors. It's, it's a movie that, like, it's, it's fr- the story <coughs> is. It's a lot. It's fine. Yeah. Like, the story is fine. 
as far as divorce movies goes. Like this is kind of it goes that. Those route. are hard movies for me. But to like watch. it's yeah. the acting that is incredible. Yeah. Like to to imagine being Laura Dern sitting there and seeing a phenomenal actor in front of her, where it's just uh, what, what's her name, Scar Jo, oh, just okay. breaking down in front of her and being like, man. There's no way Laura Dern didn't walk out of the room and be like, I'm never going to be that good. Laura Dern's pretty Laura good. Laura Dern's so good in this, though. ScarJo is... Do you, you remember the scene I'm talking about where ScarJo is breaking down and Laura Dern is yeah. kind of trying to figure... Like, how do you not walk out of there and think, ah, I can't ever do that? Yeah. This was <laughs> such an interesting movie to me. It I just like talking shit about Laura Dern. <laughs> God, <I laughs> who got nominated for... <laughs> Laura Dern's a phenomenal actor. She's so yeah. good. Phenomenal actor. She's been in a um, lot of great stuff. Wasn't she in uh, Big Little Lies? Yeah. 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 I didn't watch it, though. I didn't watch it, though. Oh, Big Little so, she's really fun in Big Little Lies. Yeah. She's like a sassier version, less shitty. Sassier, this, okay. <laughs> less shitty yeah. than this one, but like a sassier version yeah. where she kind of goes off the rails, um, and it's really fun. Yeah. Um, this was a hard one for me because the movie itself I thought was fine, but I thought the performances were so good where it's like it was hard for me to figure out where to put this on my list, and ultimately mm. it didn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. But um, man. Everybody like Laura Dern is so good. Adam Ray Driver. Liotta is plays such like an interesting character. Adam Driver. I hate Scarlett Ray Johansson. Liotta. I hate Laura Dern in this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love Ray Liotta as an actor. Oh, he's so I good. love Ray Liotta. Um, but and even the little kid was also really good and just I don't know. Yeah. It was interesting seeing how they played like New York versus that's, LA. That's what I'm saying. Like this movie, like it's it's the acting is so incredible that like it doesn't like the story being. It, it's a whatever story. Yeah. It's just the acting that like keeps you so engaged, and ultimately that's why it's nine and not higher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else was I gonna say? I really liked the ending and how they like mirrored things that happened in the beginning, and just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. seeing all of that come together, I thought was really cool. Um, Noah Baumbach, man, I like him. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna interrupt to say this. There's a uh, The Hollywood Reporter did a roundtable with Noah Baumbach, Greta Gerwig. Todd Phillips, Martin Scorsese, Lulu Wang from The Farewell, mm -hmm. and then the guy whose name I don't remember that directed The Two Popes. And it's just a director's roundtable oh, about everything. That. It's it might be There's like a if I could variety does that. It's this one's Hollywood Reporter. Okay, yeah. Um, that if I could rank that on like my top favorite content of the year, I think that would be number one. I love they do that every year. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. I think last year they did all the actors as well. They do multiple every year. Yeah, because um, they just did one with like all the. Not all of them, but a lot of like the best actress nominees. Can and stuff you like that. imagine sitting in a room and you're like, I mean, Noah Baumbach has directed a ton of films. He's very good. Greta Gerwig as well is like, she's, I, I think she's a great director as well. If you haven't seen, uh, I think her, she did a movie called Mistress America. It's fucking hilarious. She did. And she Bird. did Lady Bird, which is great. She's a great director. But can you imagine sitting in a table all, with all of your peers who are like yeah. your contemporaries and then Martin Scorsese's there also? Well, I'd be like, everyone shut the fuck up and well, just no, let Marty the best talk. Part about just the just video. let Marty talk. The best part about the video is how like earnest and like engaged he is with in with like letting other people have their voice and like you can just tell that he's like so excited to hear people talk about this and I was like man I I've well, seen that side of him yeah. maybe really like a lot he's for, a fanboy he's like for, a, yeah. for quick yeah. not fanboy but like he's a fan of films mm -hmm. did anyone put the Irishman no. on yeah I haven't watched there. it yet. Okay. I'm, I, I'm I gonna watch it before the Oscars, but I just didn't have three. And Again, hours I think this is one of those that politically needed to be on the list because it is sort of the culmination of all of the Scorsese gangster films. You got mm -hmm. all the you got the gang back, the old, all the old crew uh, back to do it, and I think that the Academy sometimes just does this. Um, and also, I think Netflix has a shit ton of money to put behind some of these campaigns because they're still trying to legitimize their platform as a legitimate movie platform. And when uh, they talked about that in the roundtable, yeah, of just like how you. How do you balance like either you do direct streaming or getting picked up by something like A24 and like how they all balance that with their films and stuff like that? Super One of these days when we get big enough, I want to I want to bring in the head of A24 oh, and just be like, how the fuck do you pick projects? Because every project they pick is amazing. So it's, it's, I mean, if I'm not it mistaken, me. they did Booksmark also, right? Or is that Annapurna? Let me look. I, I think that I one think might be it. Annapurna. Yeah, but it it reminds me of a uh, Miramax when like back in the in day. their heyday, yeah, yeah where it was yeah. like they couldn't. They and had it, a great. Project. It was just Pulp them. Fiction. They had yeah. all the Tarantino, Otto Rodriguez, mm -hmm. every Kevin Smith movie, and you were like, you guys are crushing like, yeah. right now. Turns out, Booksmart is Annapurna's uh, yeah. mystery as yes, man. Our fact checker in the chat. Dun, 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 dun. 
Uh, sorry. So now we can go back. So your number nine was. Hold on one second. I'm we're, I'm doing finishing a lunch order, and I just didn't want to. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'll go to my number nine. Let's do it. Which is the dirt. Now, if you haven't dirt. seen the dirt, I watched this movie. I shit you not, three times. It is one of my favorite and most fun movies of 2019. It is the uh, biopic about Motley Crue that was put out on oh, on Netflix. I remember you talked about that. And it's if you haven't seen it, it is arguably the best, most fun movie about a band that you'll ever watch it's so well done it's so it's it heartful huh. at moments heartbreaking Fine. at moments I fucked expecting. up at moments and it is i mean anytime you're seeing a band go from like nothing to like the 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 massive yeah. fa- uh, fame that motley Crue has had and has still mm-hmm. to this day it's gonna be a fun ride yeah but the fact that it's obviously an 80s period piece which i love <laughs> yeah. uh the fact that it's motley Crue, which i'm familiar with the music and the fact that it's just done so well and it's a netflix original was just i was blown away by this i mm-hmm. was like dude I, lo- I i liked it so much i legitimately begged my wife to watch it with me because I was like, I think you're gonna love this, yeah. and she was like, All right, it was Saturday. She fucking loved it. It's so oh. fun. I like when that happens. It's, it's so cool. Such a good um, thing. Yeah. Most of the like, I would say ninety percent of the acting's great. The guy that plays Tommy Lee is a little bit uh, not great, but everyone else is so good. He's fun. He's good enough in it. Yeah. That that uh, uh, I, I just I really like that movie. Oh. And when I was looking through this list, looking through the things I watched, um, there's a couple Netflix original movies on here that I thought, Wow, man, Netflix just is really holding their own with the big boys. I mean, at this point, they're a big boy. I know, right? It's silly to say. They're, they're like a major studio at this point. I know. We're going to get the second to all the boys movie this year. Hell yeah, we are. Ooh. Is that on your list? Well, it's not out yet. Uh, that It'll be 20. That's the It'll, yeah. anticipated list. For sure. Cool. Um, My number nine is John Wick Parabellum. Man, I just lo- like, I feel like the John Wick movies keep getting better. Um. And I just love everything about it. I love the world that they build. I like the hotel and like the who's the guy? I can't remember names. I'm not good with oh, names. Oh, uh, uh, Lance Redding. No, who's the that head guy? Of the hotel. And then the other one, Shane or Ian McBlack. I think yeah. is the or Ian somebody? McShane. The, Shane, that's what it is. The yeah. doorman, right? Lance who Reddick is the doorman, doorman. Oh, okay. who is like yes, the guy Mr. that Wick. runs it. All. Who's the guy oh, from? Uh, it, he's it. the guy from uh, that Fox series. Fuck, what the fuck was it called? The yeah. the Fringe. He there was in go. Fringe. He played like the the head of the FBI. Yeah. Team. He's awesome. The whole crew is great. Yeah. They get great actors. They got Halle Berry for this. Those movies. Oh, she was not great though. No, God. but they, but I liked her. Like they oh, get. I thought she was like. I think she I was, was fine in it. Yeah. I just think her character was. A I thought she was cutter. really bad. Really? Yeah. This like she seemed like she was really just kind of bringing the B game. Not trying the hardest. that. But I like the way that they like <laughs> they also, they funny. had all the like the knife fight at the beginning and like I just feel like it was really dynamic and it was a it was a fun movie to watch but it was also like a stressful movie of like oh my gosh what's happening yeah absolutely um I never thought I'd be in a place where I would love uh what's his name as much as I do and <laughs> like in like wait for the movies that he's gonna be he's in. just he's he's just never gone away man he's just always put but the work in and he way he dipped down a little bit after matrix i think voluntarily yeah. mm-hmm. i think he was like i don't want to do big budget movies well, yeah, anymore those were huge he and did like, a bunch of like uh he did a couple movies that were just straight up kung fu movies oh, uh, yeah. if you remember i think he did like fuck seven samurai or not seven samurai oh uh, uh, he did god it was something about that where he was a samurai it was fucking badass it was him and like three others like the ronins seven ronins oh yeah 47 seven ronins, ronins 47 like that. ronins that's, that's what it was. right yeah which was, was, was dope was I that actually, cool i actually kind of liked it yeah, oh, yeah. yeah right. but it was it was fun <laughs> it was fun concept he did another one uh that was like he was a bad guy to try in like a kung fu film uh mm-hmm. and then yeah you, you then he just goes i'm gonna quietly go away and i'm just gonna make this fun film called john wick and that i honestly believe and I, I he'll never confirm this even though we're homies that i think he just made john wick to make another successful movie so he could get bill and ted's made oh. that's my that's my theory <laughs> i think he made it because he was like i want to learn kung fu i think yeah i think yeah. he wanted that i think he wanted to learn jiu-jitsu yeah. i think he just does yeah. shit because he just enjoys yeah, martial totally. arts and, and just enjoys making fun movies and he's do you think the matrix led into that at all yeah absolutely Where they're like hey we're gonna teach you a couple movies and he was like this is cool. Well, he pa- he tra- well, he trained I with. I really like Kevin's Keanu Reeves cool. impression. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, he trains like he's he puts the work in and he puts it's the work in so really we can do a lot impressive. of stuff. It's, it's, cool. it's extremely impressive and it's cool. Like whenever these movies are coming up, it's t- there's two people that do this mm-hmm. where they'll like put out clips of them learning to do stuff. Keanu Reeves and Tom That's, Cruise. Yep. Yeah. Tom Cruise learned to fly a fucking helicopter, like stunt flying a helicopter. He's so cool. Yeah. Well, dude, uh, Keanu Reeves and Henry Cavill got my got my forever uh, love when I saw them training with the Machados down in San- in L.A. with Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. The Machados are like a legit 
like Gracie family, one of the original families to bring jujitsu to America. And the fact that he would go into that fucking den of vipers and like train and get Willingly, smashed yeah. by these, like these masters of jujitsu is pretty cool. It's pretty, he could have picked people that would have just taught him the choreography, but right. he actually goes in there and he I want to like be this, against the best. I mean, he just knows and he just, pick the best to train with so yeah. it's pretty cool that's rad yeah and i liked all the different like play like we were out of new york and we got to see all these different iterations of like what this we yeah it's worldwide world now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so i think it's just I'm really it's for. a fun world i'm, I'm even interested in tv show yep because i like the hotel aspect of it so much what is, what's the one called hotel what is it oh I don't that's know. what the show's called right yeah hotel artemis or no, that no. was a movie. That, that was, was another yeah, movie. Yeah, that was a movie. That's it's the one with like Jodie Foster, yeah, which honestly... Was it not bad? It's not... I li- It's because it's that same idea that I think I really liked it. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah. Uh, Nick. Yes. You're number eight. That I think... Well, uh, oh, let me look. My number eight is Dolomite Is My Name. Oh, awesome. Now, my this list. movie I was not expecting to like. I was like, I don't know about this. Is Eddie Murphy doing some crazy shit again? I watched it. I was like, this is Eddie Murphy returning to his roots. It's a tr- it's, it's Eddie Murphy back in full form. It's a cool story. It's a great. He does such a fucking good job. And just perfectly honest, watching Eddie Murphy do comedy for an R-rated movie is so fun again. And it made me just remember that he is the motherfucking goat. And we should all hail him. And he's awesome. I watched this movie. Yeah. And I remember Makuga, I think, was telling me that it's his number. It might have been also Gary Widow. I think it's Gary Widow's one. I think it might be Makuga's as well. Oh, interesting. Um, I don't I don't get it. Really? I, I mean, <laughs> I, I do very much like the performance that Eddie Murphy brought to the table, where I was just like, he is back in full form. But overall, the movie moved s- way too slow for my taste. And just kind of was fine. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just, I'm a fan. I mean, I, I, you can tell that it came from a perspective of him being a fan of the original guy that played Dolomite, whose name I can't remember now. But I just, I love the, the message of the character, which was that like, you're never too, well, obviously, you're never too old to achieve your dream (laughs) and you have to believe in yourself. And, and that power of that belief can rally people around you. And the fact that he was actually able to make those films and, and and have that character come to life on screen and like inspire people with that. I just thought was really really cool. And I thought that Eddie Murphy kind of taking the reins of that, and you can tell he had a lot of him in, in the script, um, was just awesome. Wesley Snipes coming back in as the, this weird director was great. Uh, I forget the actress's name that played uh, I think Queenie or Queen was her name. Um, something she was the other the other main character in it. Um, oh, oh yeah the, the yeah the like the the female lead in the right. movie. Um, I just thought it was I thought it was fun and I just love period pieces. Like, I also love movies about making movies. Yeah. It has a special place they're in my so, heart. Especially so. when it's like they're trying to put together this low budget movie. Yeah. And they yeah. and they did it in like, you know, this old abandoned Broken hotel, down hotel. And, yeah, with yeah. no power and all that stuff and they were stealing power from their neighbors and I was like, "That ah, sounds like us here." Yeah. Kind of funny. Um <laughs> but yeah, I just liked it. And and more more than that, it just uh, to me I hope it's the start of a new like renaissance of Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. He's already come so back. Too. He's already done SNL. He's got a new comedy special coming out. We've got two movies coming right around the He's corner. Got coming to America, two coming out and what uh, Coming to uh, America. Coming to America and Beverly Hills Cop 4. Yeah. Uh, which I'm feeling. One of those movies I'm, I'm extremely ex- excited about. I'm excited I'm about both. both. Yeah. Really? I just the, the, I love Beverly Hills Cop. I, I hope they can find a way to treat uh, Beverly Hills Cop with the serious respect that it deserves. And what I say about that is Beverly Hills Cop 3 was zany and weird yeah. and felt like a parody of Beverly Hills Cop. You go back and watch 1 and 2 and they are dead on like action movies. Yeah. And he is the comedic well, we element in- but everyone else around him is just playing it pretty straight. So with the exception of George Ryan Holt who's a fucking idiot. But like <laughs> but, the, but the tone of those movies is so hard to, to nail and that's my only fear is that you're coming back 30 years after the first movie came out. It's real tough. And you're trying to you have to nail the tone you have to nail the character again. Will he be able to do it? I don't know. Based on Beverly Hills Cop 3? No. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Mm. Will we do in in review series? I would love to do Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop in review? Oh, my God. I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. I love the first. The first there. two Beverly Hills Cops are two of my favorite movies of all time. I love them. Each for their own each for their own little nuances. Joey, you're number eight. I feel like this is going to be my most controversial pick because I don't know if this is on anyone else's list. But it is the rise of Skywalker. Oh, really? I had I had such a low bar for this movie, yeah. and like I get that it's not a perfect movie by any means. It moves really fast. A lot fast. of people say it fixes a lot of mistakes that uh, some of, other movies made. You know what I mean? I it didn't get rid of Metaclorin, but it got fucking close. <laughs> <laughs> I get there's um I could you could I can name criticisms forever, but 
I had such a fun time that it's like kind of worth it to put it on my list. Um, I Adam Driver, man. Who would have thought this year like really turned me around on Adam Driver? Because I feel like before I was like, I liked him. I thought he was really good in Black Klansman. But I feel like mm. between seeing him in this and then Mary Shore, I was like, this is maybe the best actor we've ever had in Star Wars. Oh, I mean, yeah. Well, well not, not the best Ford, actor Harrison we've ever Ford. had, but like, but like, I mean, well, I don't know, he's up if there. you count James Earl Jones as, uh, as Darth Vader, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. But, um, I, I'm with you on this one. Like, I think that, I think that a lot of the things that I really liked about the rise of Skywalker had to do with the relationship with Ray and um, Kylo. And I think that they, yeah. I think he had a lot, he really brought a lot to the screen on this one. Yeah. Specifically when he kind of has that transformation, um, and I, I, I liked it too. Um, and again, there's a, a lot of criticisms on the rise of Skywalker and I can see a lot of the people's perspectives on that, but I'm kind of with you where I walked out of the theater. I was like, I had a good time with that. I think it was a decent end to the, to the nine movies. And yeah. specifically, I thought he was the best part of that movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I, yeah, I just had a really fun time with it. And I, I know I love it was, the, I love the sweater he wears at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and the part where he's like surrounded, I don't know. Uh, and yeah, just I mean, just little, the, the everyone thing. watching this show has seen the rise of Skywalker. I know, but um, yeah. yeah, I just like it's one that I've like thought about a lot since I left theater. Just like different parts, I like that they had Charlie from Lost in it. That was like a fun, weird little. I feel like that, they like, brought all of so JJ's <laughs> friends back in. Right? He's like, you have a little role. You have a little role. You have a role. Yeah, um, so underutilized. I know, but but I like that though. Because yeah. if that were me, if I were like a giant star. And JJ was like, hey, I just want you in for this one scene. I'm like, absolutely, I'll do it. I, absolutely. I, yeah. My only thing with that is I, I do find it a little distracting in the scene. It's weird because like, you're oh, like, that's what, Dominic what, Monaghan. What's yeah. Charlie doing here? Yeah, but yeah. but I thought they gave him just enough to do where you're like, all right, fine. Yeah. But I mean, the movie was like ridiculously yeah, star set. Yeah. It, so, fast, fast movie. Yeah, and it's fast. Also, Carrie Russell, I really liked. <laughs> I, li I liked her too. Like, I think there was just oh. enough of her yeah. in it that it wasn't she like She definitely too much. was like really cool. Yeah. I don't know anything about her. She's got a cool little friend. She's real cool. Yeah. yeah. I, to me, to me, I feel like this was the Star Wars movie that if they had, you know, the, the criticism I had was it's a lot, it's like three movies in one yeah. and obviously it was supposed to be three movies and I think if they had been able to spread that out a little bit over the three movies, I think it would have been really, really fun. But I mean, to me, really, really great. To me, I had a lot of fun with it. So there it is. What's up, Andy? I just give it a second. There What's it is. up, Andy? Um, there's some quick breaking news. Like, I want to just let Andy everyone know what Andy just did. Andy just walked in and looked at us and smiled <laughs> and waited. And then when Barrett gave him the go ahead to get on the mic, no, I was, he I fell was against the wall. He <laughs> fell against the wall like he's been on an all night bender with this rock band. <laughs> And was like, hey, everyone, I'll be playing uh, you guys got the Bill a Graham, later? November yeah. 9th, November 10th, Bill Graham Auditorium. Um, the uh, breaking news, uh, there will officially be no season two of Watchmen. Shut up. Oh. Uh, Lindelof, it's Lindelof for... backed out. He said, I have no interest in it. And HBO said, okay, cool. That's it's for the best. Fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. And if they can just tell me there's not going to be a season two of Outsider, I think HBO Are you watching the... Outsider right oh, now? yeah. And it's so good. Oh, and I man. think it's only four episodes because it's a miniseries, and I hope the fucking God they don't do it again because it's so good. I'm very excited to go How watch many episodes it, are there so far? Two. Okay. I think there's only four. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's – thank you for bringing that news yeah. to us. I think it's really good for Watchmen. If only we could add that into the Watchmen uh, review. That's that unbelievable yeah. that they're doing that. I, I mean, that just makes me. I'm. I'm very like, every, happy Everything with I've ever said bad about Damon Lindelof, I'd now take back. No, <laughs> not all of it. No, he okay. fucked us Thank with you. Lost, and he fucked us with Prometheus, but that wasn't his fault. That's awesome. That's really good. Yeah, news. good stuff. Anything more about? Uh... No. Okay, good. Which covers it? My number eight. Yeah. Once Upon a Time in, in Hollywood. Hollywood. Good for you. Oh, wait, did that make everyone's list? No. Okay, it made my list. As it well. was close. On, it was the one that I was like, oh, man, and then I didn't put it on. For me, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is one of those movies where I'm like, I watched it, and I was like, that was a really fun movie, but I don't think it's going to be in my like, top 10 movies of the year. And then I watched it again on a plane, and I was like, that was a really fun movie. I really enjoyed watching that again. Then I watched it again on a plane, and I was like, <laughs> I can't stop watching this movie. I think I really like this movie. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a really fun, like, just experiential slice of life movie where you're just with these guys for a couple days. My uh, my first time watching it, it I think like a year, but whatever. There was a lot more tension than I needed to have because I didn't know what was going to go yeah. down. So it was one of those things where I think I was sitting like this the whole time, just kind of like mm, mm, trying to figure out where the plot was going to go. And it wasn't until the end where you're like, ah, "This is more of a laid back movie." Yeah, until, it's just chill it's, until the very end. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the next time watching it, it was just like enjoying. The chemistry of all the actors and the just just watching Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio have a scene with Al Pacino and then he never comes back or like he comes back a little bit and you're yeah. like it doesn't matter. 
And then watching like, him go to Italy, you're like, become matter. best friends with Brad Pitt and me it's being like, so I fun. hope they're friends in real life. Me too. <laughs> I just want them to have that friendship. Yeah. For me, obviously, like the idea of Hollywood is this romanticized right. thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I've always, I always talk about how I'd love to live in LA again. Uh, or love to live in Southern California, specifically in LA. And everyone always goes, I'm like, because of this, this, and this. And everyone's like, Nick, that's not really LA. LA is hard to live in. It's traffic. It's a lot of crazy people. And it's, the industry is difficult down there. But to me, he nailed that romanticized version of Hollywood, no, but then also throwing in a dose of reality where it is about this guy's stardom di- like waning. And yeah. what's he going to do after? Like The line he has where he's like, I'm going to have to sell the house and buy a condo in Tarzana or whatever it was. <laughs> it's like the saddest thing I've ever yeah. heard anyone have to say. Um, but it's reality. And like, and I just, I find that thing, that, that space so fascinating of what happens to a star when his his fame starts declining, yeah. and then of course they gave him just a little moment of hope at the end, yeah. where the mm-hmm. gate opens up and he goes to get yep. the, he gets I'm the just party one party away. Yeah, one party away, which is cool, and that and that is Hollywood right there, right? Yeah. Hollywood is this thing that's like, and if you meet the right person, you get. That's not good. No, that's, that's a straight really old bad. leak. Yeah, we should look at that later. <laughs> um, that window's leaking up there. That's really bad. I know. Um, okay. So that's not good. But anyway, <laughs> I, I thought that was good too. That's also on my list. Yeah, yeah, that this is another one where like, this is one of the few movies I feel like this year that I liked, but I was like, man, I felt like I kept looking at my watch because it this movie felt really long to oh, me. It was it was long though. So I wish that it would have just been a little bit tighter so that I didn't feel like that. Um, and they but, re-released it even longer. Oh, geez, they had um, like what six minutes or something for, for oh for once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, I didn't watch it. Like <laughs> it, it didn't come out in China. Because of the Bruce Lee stuff, right? And like they tried to re-release it here to try to help make some more money. I think so, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Um, but I thought the perfor- it's one of those where it's like the story I thought was like kind of whatever. I didn't. I don't think I loved it as much, but I did just think that all of the performances were really incredible. Sorry, every, is it gonna <laughs> every <laughs> sound it hits? No, Kevin and I are both freaking out about like out shit. So we're much have to, like, we're have to call the how much water is about to come down? <laughs> no, it's probably just a little. Bit. Yeah, it, it sounds, sounds like, like it's drip. stopping. The rain has stopped. Uh, sorry yeah. about that. Um, all right. What's mm-hmm. you? No. Who's next? I, I'm going to do me again. Okay. And then, we'll, oh, okay. And then him again. Yeah. So my number seven, mm-hmm. Knives Out. Ooh. This is one that I talked to Nick about. Like, I don't know where I should put it. If I should put it. Continue. Um, I just, God, I had so much fun with this movie. Uh, I, this reminded me why I love Ryan Johnson so much as a director. And I think he also wrote this. Yeah. He writes and he directs. he got a screenplay nod for Oscars. For Nomination for screenplay, and I don't think much else. Yeah, I think this is the only thing. Um, I he's so good at crafting stories with weird, complex characters that interact with these other characters. That it just he makes such a fun story. And as far as who's done it, like who done it, uh, go. This one was a blast. Yeah. Like, halfway through, they kind of reveal what's going on, and you're like, wait a minute. Are they fucking with me right now? <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, I just, watching it, I, it was one of my worst movie theater experiences this year, just because we were front row in a shitty theater, oh, that's right. and it was like, oh, it sucks. Did I get the wrong tickets? Oh, was I supposed to go with all of them at a different movie theater? I yeah, sure oh, was. Oh, I was like, that? didn't we see it together? I, yeah, I texted you, I was like, Joey, where are you? And you're like, I'm here. And I was like, oh, shit, where's here? Yeah, there was like <laughs> a bunch of us in the other yeah, theater. But. yeah. Um, yeah, I like ensemble cast movies, and I feel like this is a great one of, like, you get Jamie Lee Curtis and then, like, Tony Collette in a role that, like, sh- I haven't really seen her in in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just, like, fun and kind of goofy. And, man, Anna de Armas, I don't remember her from anything. I know that she Blade was Runner. in. Blade Runner, yeah. Blade Runner, yeah. But, like, I don't really remember her a whole lot. Um, but she, I thought she was great in this. Yeah. She's just so lovable. Yeah. I just wanted, like. That little button chin. <laughs> Kiss me every time. Every, every time, like something would happen, I'd be like, "Oh no, I hope she's okay." Mm-hmm. That's yeah. I love it. Yeah, I gotta and watch like, that. Yeah. Movie. And, uh, what's his name? Chris Evans. Yeah. That's so good. Damn, man, this that is one of those my wife man. just snuck out and saw without me, and I was like, "Yo, I can't believe she did that." Like she was like, "You're on a trip." I was like, "Uh, I come back from the trip yeah. sometimes." Have you seen it or no? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, if I don't see a movie with you guys or my wife, I don't see a movie. It's real good. That's just what happens. Cool beans. Alrighty, Joey, you're number seven. My number seven. Which, another one I was struggling to figure out where in the list to put it. Uncut Gems. Oh. Yeah. I, it was the most stressful movie going God, experience so I've good. had. I would say like this and Midsummer were the ones that I were the most stressed about. 
uh, and Midsummer ultimately didn't end up making my list. Yeah, Midsummer did not make my list as well, but it was close. Yeah. Um, but this was, it was just like a world that I didn't really have like any, no, like I don't, I didn't remember anything about the trailer walking into this, but Adam Sandler is so good. It is mind blowing to me that he did not get nominated. I, I don't, don't understand. I don't understand at all. It really shows how broken the system must be because yeah. this movie, wow. Uh, I Good thing I don't know anything about sports. I feel like if we had gone with Andy, he might have known the result of the last game that they were talking about. Is it? I don't think it's based on a real, it's, is no. it? Well, no, the game is real that happened. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because okay. I literally was like, hey, Andy, 2012, who was? Oh, got it, got it, he was like, it. oh, it was this. And okay. I was like, mm-hmm. Got it. It would have been less stressful that way. So yeah. I'm glad that, like, uh, he couldn't make it. Yeah. Uh, and just seeing, like, seeing how, like, you just move things from here to here and there to there. and da, da, da. It's just, like, this game where you're trying to shuffle everything the, and not the, get caught, essentially. The most upsetting thing is, like, when he goes to do something and he's got, like, four things to do, it, like, reminds me so much of how I live my life. <laughs> I'm not betting a bunch of money, but I am always, like, trying to maximize my time. Dude, yeah. it's so and, well, like, if we go to fun. this Home Depot, yeah. then we can go to this Best Buy and, uh, yeah, all that kind Yeah, of stuff. and it's just, you know, it's a great way to live. Yeah. But it's it? so, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Especially when there's nothing on the line, like, it's, yeah. like, you're going to die. Um, but, God, I have never come out of a movie theater with my arms and legs like as sore as they were then because yeah. it was just the, the entire time I was sitting there tense. Like, okay, like I was sitting next to bear and every once in a while I had to like grab him and be like, it's going to be okay, bear, right? It's going to be okay. <laughs> and then I would look over to you and be like, no, yeah. everything sucks. Bear just looks over and is like, I'll bet you $10. It's not okay. Like, no, no more bets. I can't take any more gambling in this movie. Uh, uh, yeah. So good. The girl that was in it, like his like shop girl, or whatever, mm-hmm. No idea who she was, but I really liked her, too. She's I don't good. think I'd ever Dude, seen her. I, Julia I, something? I, Julia Fox, I think, yeah. is her yeah. name. And I walked out of there, and I was like, "There." it's very rare that you see movies that should be, like, you, you see the moment someone has a breakout role. But to me, this needs to be her breakout role. Yeah. Yeah. If she doesn't become a huge star from this, like, I, I, I'm disappointed at all. I, I loved how much, like, I was like, oh, she seems like not a great character. And then you like, start, that you, she seems cool. Yeah. To like, mm, now fuck her. And to like, you know what? Uh, you know what? Right on. Yeah, right on. <laughs> like, and, that, and to me, that's that's yeah. that's a sign of good storytelling and good acting, right? Yeah. Is that you start off where you're like, oh, this is just this person who's who's just this you like your ideas. taking advantage yeah. of him or whatever, and then by the end of it, you actually really sympathize with her and you really right. sympathize with him. Which to the to to me, that's what the power of this movie is that you have a very unsympathetic character. You have a yeah. character that, for all intents and purposes, is is a piece of shit. And, and kind of a rascal, yeah. and by the end of it, you're rooting for him to win, but you also want him to lose so he can get help. But you yeah. also don't want him to lose because that's not going to be really good right. for him. Yeah. It's a very complex movie, yeah. um, and I thought it was shot beautifully. And I thought the way the the way the space is used in that movie is really cool. So when you see it, pay attention to like how they use how his world gets smaller as it gets more chaotic, mm. and then opens up as it gets to like to like the stuff that he's less interested in. It's pretty cool. I liked Lakeith Stanfield in this he's too as the awesome. side character. He's and you so don't know good. if like he's good or bad. I know. And you're that's like, the whole movie. And also, was that the real crazy. Kevin? Garnett? Answer, yeah, your he's phone. really good. I know. Answer I know. your phone. Stop not answering your phone. Um, yeah. I have to look. I think it's a. I think it's the A twenty four podcast did an episode with the Safdie brothers about this. It's really good. Oh, I want to watch that. They're those guys are awesome. I didn't see the, any of their other films. I think they did a movie with Robert Pattinson. That's supposed to be good. We're gonna do a prediction episode of Screencast in two weeks. Before Next the week. Oscars happen. Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, and we're going to get more into it, but it is it makes no sense to me at all that this is, didn't get any Oscar nomination. I mean, it just depends on how much money people want to put behind things, honestly. And like it came out, what's weird to me is that it came out during the time of year that's that's prime the for prime, Oscars, yeah. which is the very last Do you think it's a little bit weeks. too late? I think it was a little too late. Yeah. yeah. And I think that um I just think that they weren't they didn't put enough money in and, and I mean it's all it's, it they had to wasn't have a, a campaign. It was a super wide release, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I think and it was toward the toward the beginning of the year. To me I looked back and I had to double check that this movie didn't come out in 2020. Because I was like, oh, I swear to God, it came out at the in the first beginning yeah. part of January, but no, it came out in December. Yeah. Um, but it came out and it just kind of kind of came and was very understated for people. Uh, I saw it because I was like, well, there's literally right. nothing else to see, and I want to see movies today. And I was a little stressed out with like signing the lease for the new place. And Danielle's like, Oh, why don't you? Well, we'll see Uncut Gems. I was like, Cool, that'll be <laughs> relaxing. It's a Sandler film. <laughs> oh, that was a sleep huge all night. mistake. That was a big yeah. mistake. Yeah. 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 This one caught me totally off guard I, because I'm not an, an Adam Sandler fan really at all yeah. and I was like totally I mean this away. is not an Adam Sandler movie in yeah. the, any way that like no. when you say Adam Sandler movie you're thinking 
Billy Big Madison, Daddy. yeah, uh, Water yeah, Boy Waterboy. I mean, there's two Adam Sandlers. Right. There's the comedic Adam Sandler and the I'm actually a pretty fucking good actor and I pick really cool no, projects. There's Adam a third Sandler, one, which is uh, the m- Murder sellout. Mystery, which is I just need I want a lot. No, of money. Murder Mystery I think is closer <laughs> to sellout movie. No, it's sure. a, it is in fact a sellout <laughs> movie. And the ridiculous, but it's, it's closer to like classic Adam Sandler than like The Cobbler. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's fair. Fair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, I think I was also confused on the release of this because it had I had always heard about it talked about in the same realm as Marriage Story and The Irishman of like, oh, it's a Netflix movie. And the fact that like it still hasn't come out on Netflix yeah. was kind of confusing to me too. I also was very, very confused about that. I didn't realize it, it was yeah. Netflix. I, I don't not. think I don't know that it is because it's A twenty four, right? I'm pretty sure it is coming out on Netflix. Well, A twenty four is the is sort of the production company. Netflix right. could just be the distributor, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see any other like it's bigger un, it's studio unclear. names on it. Yeah. That's true. I Usually, Netflix when Netflix does something, like when Netflix or Amazon do something like that, they put their name everywhere. everywhere yeah. And I didn't see it. And anywhere. usually, it's yeah. a couple weeks release, and then it's on their platform. Yeah, exactly. So it comes to Netflix on January thirty first. Cool. So it is like a, mm. another one of those like kind of quick. Yeah, that's weird. Ones. Everyone should watch that movie as soon as it comes out or support it in theaters. Yeah. yeah. Nicholas, your number six. Number six. Oh, well, I think I didn't. Is that right? Or no, I'm on my number seven. I think sorry, I'm finishing sorry, on number seven. seven. My number seven is a movie I want everyone at this table to see. The Art of Self-Defense. Oh! It's, on, it's available for streaming somewhere now. I think, I think. it's on Amazon because yeah. I think it's an Amazon yeah. um, Prime movie or Amazon Studios movie. I just watched mistaken. it. Ooh. I, Three days ago. What do you think? I really enjoy it. It is fucking up. weird. Yeah. It's like, it's so weird because it's not, it's not based in this world. No. It's based in a slightly different world where things are just a little off. It's very Is surreal. Is it based on yeah. a book? I don't know. No idea. No but idea. It might be the art of racing in the rain that I'm thinking. That's about. probably based on a book. Yeah. Anything with my it's Milo Vincent was right? probably a, a, <laughs> yeah. a young dog adult movie. book. Uh, no, this is Jesse Eisenberg um, and. Imogene Poots, I think is her yeah. name. Oh, yeah. And I forget the other actor that's in his name. I've seen him a couple of things, too. But it's about a guy who gets beat up and then decides that he wants to become the thing he fears, which is a great line in the movie, because I want to become the thing I fear. And so he starts taking self-defense from this um, seemingly normal but intense black belt. Uh, and then shit just spirals out of fucking and nowhere. It's so weird. And it's so cool. But it also has this like really deep meaning about violence and about what it means to be like someone who does violence against other people, even mm-hmm. if it's in self defense. And it's all very, very like, like. It's very trippy. It's very trippy. Yeah. Like, I, at first I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a silly, almost like what it almost reminded me, and this is, it's absolutely not like this, but it reminded me a little bit of the Foot Fist Way, which was Dan, one of Danny McBride's very first movies, where it was about, it's kind of a, a fun commentary on how a lot of martial arts growing up when I was a kid were just sort of like this commoditized thing that really right, didn't matter. Right, right. Like kids would just get belts and you're just yeah. making money and no right. one was actually learning any technique at all that would actually help them in a fight. And that's what I thought this was going to be. It's not that. This movie goes off on a different direction completely and it really is more about like, really is more about violence and the glorification of violence and how we use violence to like, to like um, justify all sorts, or, or we justify violence in all sorts of different ways, and I thought it was really fucking cool, and it's fucked up though. It is fucked up. I really enjoyed it. Ultimately, did not make my list, but I think I like rated it at like four or something stars. Um, the people in the chat are asking. It's called The Art of Self Defense, and if you have Amazon Prime, uh, watch it tonight. Mm-hmm. It's cool as shit. It's weird though, especially so if you've prepared. ever, if you were a kid and ever did martial arts as a kid. I was like, this is tripping me out because. So there's moments where it's like it's super philosophical, and there's moments where it's like they'll break that moment, and be like, "Oh, by the way, you owe me twenty dollars for that white belt." Like there's the part where he goes, "This is your white belt. This is your belt. This is yours. All the knowledge you have will be soaked up in this belt. Do not lose this belt. If you lose, like, never come to class without this belt. If you do, dire consequences will happen." Also, it's a twenty dollars replacement. <laughs> so it's like that where you're like, "Oh my god, yeah, that was me when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like, I want all the cool stuff, but yeah. I was just being sold to." Did you watch The Lobster? No. Oh, okay. This had, had a very, very much, similar vibe. It's it's the tone uh, that people have when they interact with each other, where it's like something's really off with this world, where people are very like weirdly formal. Well, it's like a it's like yeah. a fable, yeah. Sort of, it's like allegorical, right? right? Like you go in and it's not a movie that's supposed to be based in reality, or it's supposed to feel like a little bit of a fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and in, in that, it, they can play around with the theme and, and the philosophies of the movie a little bit, and the characters. Like there's stuff that happens in this where you're like, well, okay, we're we're not in reality anymore. Yeah, not in the reality that we know, but there is there are physical rules to this. But th- Jesse Eisenberg's character in this is so fucking. The, it's so cool to watch the transition. It's, it's yeah. fun. It's rad. 
That's, I'm going to double check that's on Amazon All right. Prime. It, it is. Yeah. I just watched it. Okay. If it's not that, it's Hulu. But I it's, think... People are saying it's on Hulu. Oh, maybe... All right, then. But I don't have Hulu, so there's no way I watched that. Oh, yeah, it's Amazon. Oh, you know what? Maybe I rented it on Amazon Prime. Maybe. That must be what I did. Uh, before we continue, I'm going to go into some ads. Okay. Our first ad is Upstart. Between hitting, hitting the gym, eating cleaner or learning a new skill. There is a lot of ways we can better ourselves in the new year, but I can't think of one that is more important than starting the year off tackling high interest credit card debt. My friends at upstart.com are here to help. If only sweet Greg Miller knew about Upstart when he got the call from IGN to drive cross-country and start anew in one of the most expensive cities in the nation. He could have saved himself some money. Being new to the adult world, his credit score wasn't great, so that traditional loan he got came with a high interest rate, which means he was paying more every month. This is exactly where Upstart could have saved the day. Upstart is the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. Upstart believes you are more than just your credit score. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. Since it's just the soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate. The best part, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very uh, next business day. If you plan correctly, that's the next day. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit card, uh, credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes that's upstart.com slash morning uh our next sponsor is manscaped support for kind of funny morning show comes from manscaped who is the best in men's below the belt grooming manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels it's 2020 and you know what that means new year new me new balls men listen up Harry Bush's art, so 2019. If you're going to pick any New Year's resolution this year, let it be take care of your junk. Manscaped is making uh, it easy with their grooming products. Look, if you've shaved your balls, there's a good chance you weren't using the right tool for the job. Then what happens? That's right. You cut your sack and now there's blood everywhere. Oh, no. Yeah, no, it's there's terrible. so much blood. I feel a little faint. <laughs> I feel like I'm off faint. <laughs> Don't be like me and get Manscaped. Their lawnmower 2.0 has a proprietary skin safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. It's a hard one to read, but no, it's important. It's, it's this the, is an important safety I, tip. I hate for that, that it's nick your your nuts because it just I don't nudes. like the sound of your name next to balls. Uh, manscaping accidents are finally a thing of the past. If only I had. The lawnmower 2.0. And don't use the same trimmer on your face as you're using on your balls. That's just dirty. That's such an important one. You know? Uh, Manscaped has, uh, also has the crop preserver and anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why, not put, uh, why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MORNING at Manscaped. Start the new year off uh, the right way by using the best tools for the job. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code MORNING. Your balls will thank you. Our last ad is ButcherBox. This year I'm going to eat better and spend less time and money at the grocery store and ordering, you know, Postmates and Seamless and all that stuff. Thanks to ButcherBox. ButcherBox is meat delivery subscription that 
gives me more time for what matters most. That means less trips to Costco. Paul is going to be very excited about that one. Uh, for uh, each month, they send a box of the highest quality meat for a better price than the grocery store, which gives me more uh, time to spend cooking and sharing delicious meals with my family and friends. Every month, Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high quality meats right to my home. All meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones. Uh, each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 individual meals. Maybe. You know? I eat a lot of meat. <laughs> Packed fresh and shipped frozen and vacuum sealed so it stays that way. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we got our butcher boxes and I was so excited to go home and sous vide me some steaks and salmon. It was so good. Uh, I can customize my box or go to uh, or go with one of theirs. Either way, I get exactly what I want. It's the best meat shipped right to your door, which means one less trip to the grocers. Uh, options like 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage pork, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, and sugar nitrate-free bacon. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's the way meat should be. Butcher, uh, butcher Box is the most affordable and convenient way to get healthy, uh, humanely raised meat. With Butcher Box, you can get the highest quality meat around for just six dollars per meal and they even have free shipping nationwide except alaska and hawaii sorry guys uh right now you can uh, get two pounds of salmon absolutely free plus twenty dollars off your first box just go to butcherbox.com slash morning and use promo code morning at checkout that's butcherbox.com slash morning and use promo code morning at checkout now let's get to our number six movie Woo! of 2019 this is where stuff got real hard. I'm gonna throw that out there. Mm. Is it Nicholas? Was Nick? Were you, is it your turn? Uh, I just did our self defense, but I'll go. It's yeah, six. that's right. Uh, I'm doubling up. Okay. Oh, we're doubling up. I apologize. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's just, okay. Uh, let me just send this photo to Andy. There you go. Great. Uh, I have to do that right then. Right, it's just for fun. Uh, my number six sure. is the farewell. We talked about it a lot. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I loved this movie. I was I was taken aback by how uh, awesome it was to both have just a, an intense. Uh, uh, family drama and also like it's so fascinating to me as well as just be exposed to that culture mm -hmm. um, and actually see them go to China and shoot and see that, that world um, and it just was a nice reminder that like family's family no matter where you're from yeah, which they're, I thought all was really cool. they're all giving each other shit they're all giving each other shit and everyone's got you know dreams and hopes that they wanted that some came true and some didn't because they were dedicated to their family you know yeah. I like that a lot uh, and I think Aquafina. Uh, who I'd only really seen in comedic roles, fucking blew me away in this. Mm -hmm. And that's, it, this is one of those where I'm like, okay, good on you. Like you got, not only do you have range, but you've got range that puts you in like in, in striking distance of an Academy Award. Good for you. Yeah. So I loved it. If you haven't seen it yet, you should absolutely, absolutely go see it. It's one of those rare movies that's like, hard, like you'll be crying and laughing at the same time. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Love it. My Joe's turn? your number six. <sighs> My number six, Jojo Rabbit. <sighs> I know. What a this good is, movie. I feel like at any given time, so many of my movies from here up could change depending on my mood mm -hmm. because I think they're all incredible pieces of film. But uh, Jojo Rabbit, I remember seeing the trailer and being like, oh, it's a Taika movie. It's a this wacky premise of this kid who's a Nazi and his best friend is imaginary <laughs> Hitler. And it's just like, <laughs> played, played I know. Played by Taika Waititi, which is right? ridiculous. And I was like, this is weird. And man... <laughs> It's it's weird, it's funny, but like I didn't expect to hit it on the emotional notes that it did and just like I almost cried oh. multiple times in that movie. Yeah. Not only that, I was laughing hysterically multiple times it, and it, it just Yeah. It yeah. was incredible. I thought all of the performances were really good. Taika obviously amazing. Scarjo, who I'm not normally like a historically a huge fan of, I thought was crazy good in this movie. The kids I thought were really good. Like it hit on like every note for me and like Man. The young girl. Yeah. Uh, she had been in other stuff. I don't, I didn't recognize really anyone other than like. I looked it up and I was surprised. Um, oh, but and I, also uh, Sam Rockwell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't what's her name in it too from uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fat yeah. Amy. Oh, yeah, Fat Amy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Not Rebel Wilson. Yeah. Uh, is it Rebel Wilson? Yeah, mm-hmm. Rebel Wilson. Yeah. And I feel like that was the thing where I was like nervous about when I saw the trailers of like, oh, it's Rebel Wilson being Rebel Wilson. But I feel like they used her just enough to where it wasn't. You know she, was, gonna, she was a we're little. We're going to stop Wilson. with this Rebel Wilson hate in this no, office. No, I will not no. allow it. I'm doubling down. I will down. not allow it. I, okay. I think she is fucking hilarious. She was in the worst movie I saw this year. Also true. Which one? The Hustle. The Hustle. Oh, I thought you were going to say, isn't it romantic? I was like, oh, that was pretty good. It wasn't. It wasn't pretty good. It It wasn't horrible. It wasn't. It was watchable. We okay. If you can get through all of the hustle without just wanting to rip your hair out, then we can talk about the hustle. Has like one of my least favorite things in it, which is Anne Hathaway. So no, I hate Anne Hathaway. I do not like Anne Hathaway. Okay, stop. I don't like this negativity towards a phenomenal actor. All right. Okay. She's great. We're gonna use the word phenomenal. Yeah. An actor. Have you seen Limis? About... Have you seen Limis? I saw her like sing. So no, you That's haven't. Cute. Have you seen <laughs> Interstellar? No. Have you seen The Dark Knight Rises? She's great. Have you seen anything I else she's wanna, in? I don't even want to get there. It, it, this is another podcast, man. <laughs> Love transcends. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, the uh, uh, the girl. Although I did yeah. like her. Jojo the, Rabbit. I, I like her in the intern. Okay. I thought that was a good role for her. In the divorce she's she's You so watched the most interesting movies. The intern was cute. Yeah. With Robert De Niro. Yeah. Put a note in there. That's cute. The girl. The girl from Jojo Rabbit is in a movie called The King. That was a Netflix movie. Oh, uh, the with... Timothee Chalamet movie. Mm, I did not see that it. movie. Was so close to making this list. Oh, interesting. It's a good movie. And we'll talk more about it next time. I actually sit down and tell you what I've been watching. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I thought Jojo Rabbit was so good. It is really interesting to see like you like this kid being born into like the Nazi regime and how that's just so normal for him and then just like as your worldview gets expanded you start to realize like okay maybe this isn't the right thing even though this is what I've grown up knowing and it's uh it's, it's a really very good. um it's 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 one of those movies that I'm I'm sad I missed cuz I'd love to be able to talk with you guys about it but that concept right there is just one of those is that's the power of cinema yeah. Yeah. where you can take a weird sort of surreal movie like that and have it be pretty applicable to today in America. Totally. You're like, oh, there is there are a lot of people that I wish would broaden their horizons a little bit here, yeah. but whatever. But and it, myself like, inclu- it, myself included, you know, there's the, a, you're never too old to uh to learn new shit. Like mm-hmm. Anne Hathaway, great actor. Oh my gosh. You know I mean? she's, she's an actor. I you can do. agree she is an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder. Right here, she does act. Ish. You know what? She's all right. All right, yeah, all right. right. We're one step closer. She's fine in rom coms. Let's put it that way. It's just okay. get get her out of the Nolan. That's films. a really yeah. offensive. Get her thing out of the say. Nolan films. Um, I do wonder how much of like the like top level premise did like kind of shy people away from it. Of, a like, lot. Oh, this is too period much. war Hitler. Yeah, that right there is going to limit your yeah, audience. Yeah, but that that's it's one of those things that's so disappointing because like his uh, JoJo's journey yeah. is such a it's such a good story. Yeah, that like. It, it does take something ridiculous, like, n- not ridiculous, but, like, something very extreme to be able to break someone's mentality that, like, when it's, like, this is what I've n- always known. Yeah. And, like, to see every, like, his mom is not necessarily a, a Nazi sympathizer and um, to kind of see her interact with another character where it's, like, oh, you can't take, like, this action figure hero character away from this little kid by you know just telling him like no hitler sucks yeah you know yeah and it's to to see the the progress and how that all happens is just i didn't know that um why uh, taika white had like that in him to both act that part so well and also direct yeah yeah this i mean this is like a this for sure was a this ain't Thor Ragnarok, mm-hmm. where uh, and I ain't talking shit about Thor, Thor Ragnarok. Thor a great that comedy. Is a, it's fun movie. To me, that is a natural mm-hmm. evolution of Taika Waititi and his crew's style, yeah. where you're like, okay, these guys are some of the best improvers and yeah. the dry humor on the planet. And they brought planet. Steven Merchant in for it. And they brought too. Steven Merchant in for it, which is fucking great, who I, I love and I, I love. Too. I just watched uh, a movie called The Invention of Lying, which is a Ricky Gervais oh. movie. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, I was like, I've never seen this. And there's one scene with Steven Merchant and the other guy that just <laughs> yeah. randomly put in there and it looks like it was shot digitally like they didn't even <laughs> shoot it on film but Stephen Merchant's so fucking fun they're so Steven funny Stephen Merchant's so good watch extras it's so inappropriate but so funny um yeah that's me that's good. what about you me What's number six it's book smart oh. man and you're absolutely right when it comes to, like when we're here it's so hard to, to rank these movies or like to really sit down and be like because I went in to watch I think book smart was the 
first one of these movies that going forward where I watched the movie and I was like, this is going to be my number one movie. And there's this no... came out early this year yeah. or last year. I want to say it was like February. Yeah. But I was like, there's no way any movie is going to beat this. This is, I did not expect it to be anywhere this good. Mm-hmm. And it, it is good throughout the whole movie. It brings characters that are just so zany, <laughs> but then they get real. Like yeah. it, it, it was the, the Billy Lord's like, boyfriend possibly brother it's yeah. unclear <laughs> <laughs> 20 years you know yeah uh but uh his character gets really real and like y- you have moments where you like suddenly this weird creepy guy becomes a like you care about him yeah and yeah. it's just like man good job movie it mm-hmm. is um this generation's uh Super bad. Super bad. I think it's but deeper than super bad. But uh, like that's what I'm saying. Way it's deeper than super yeah. bad. Way deeper than super bad. And but it, like I do think it hit in a similar way where like everyone a similar was like, comedic style. Yeah, this is like the <laughs> post high school movie. Yeah. And well, I think I think this is a this is a perfect way to do that high school movie. Yeah. For now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, th- where, exactly. That's what I meant. Where by like that. you know where we're having uh, what I liked most about this movie was it was about. A female character who was lesbian in high school, and it really didn't have anything to do with her being gay. Yeah, it was more just about her f- being in love with someone, regardless of their sex or their gender, rather. And then just what does that look like in today's high school world? Yeah, and I it like didn't that feel because, like having like a token gay. Character. Well, back in the eighties, it would have been about being gay. Yeah. That's what the movie would have been about. Now we've progressed beyond that, and it's just about exploring well, what that what, what love. It, her, she does yeah. explore her sexuality a little bit, but she's. But, kind of comfortable with it. I, I mean, it, I think that we, like, it was, it wasn't about that. That was a side story that was happening. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah, it was that's what about, I like yeah. about it is it wasn't, that wasn't no. the focus of the movie. It wasn't no. about, like, what I like is that when, when people make movies like mm-hmm. that, the commentary helps normalize yeah. uh, that, like, being gay, which yeah. I think is important, right? right? I think it was just about her and trying to find love and trying to find herself and trying to explore her sexuality and and and, and that, to me, is a universal theme no matter what. But, I, but I'm and saying I they th- nailed it. Like, the movie was about, like, the relationship with the, these, these two, two people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But what, but that, what I'm saying is I like that it was perspective of these two friends, yeah. one of whom was gay, yeah. and it didn't matter. Yeah. That wasn't something that necessarily needed to be a thing. Yeah. It was just – that was her. And, yes, it did matter in that she wasn't sure if this other person was into her or not, and, right. and, and I get that. But 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 it was, it was more than that, and it had a deeper meaning in it, and that meaning was way more universal, yeah. which I really, really, which really, really like. And I think that, to me, is Olivia Wilde, I think, knocked it out of the fucking park with that, is that it's so hard to do a movie that, you know, with a subject matter like that and have it be – universally sort of appealing to people like me who was a 40 year old man and i'm like wow this is cool like i haven't been in high school in 87 years and (laughs) i'm still finding things to love about this relationship between these two girls and 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 their friendship and what it means to be in that that time of your life where you're sort of you're no longer young anymore you know you're Mm -hmm. you're you're kind of cresting in high school and you're and you're exploring these things and you're you're exploring and there's a wonderful moment where she's in the pool and she's just seeing the bodies and she's just realizing that she's like a sexual being. It's really cool. That that moment was so well shot. Yeah. Like I, I remember being in the movie theater and there's a moment like gasping of like, oh, they captured this transition so perfectly on film and as the story's going. And it's just like, man, I, that might be my favorite moment of like like my favorite scene of this year. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I, I love that whole party scene. I love. And by the way, Beanie Feldstein. What's up? I love her. The goat. Calling it right now. <laughs> 20 years from now. The goat. I think she's awesome. You know, it's you been know, 22 years since you've been in high school. Yeah, right. Thanks yeah. for doing the math on that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for spending all the time I was I, talking doing the math I, on how no, long no, it's I been. I out real quick. I was waiting for the right moment. And that no, felt no, it's like it's been it. 18 years since I've been in high school. No, you're right. I graduated in 98. 22 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, fuck me. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> um, I, I, That's yeah. almost as old as Barrett. Yeah, I, I've often joked about being Barrett, <laughs> Barrett's dad. Before. I mean, you... My dad is only, I think, five years older than you. You know, so. we can just stop. A lot of we can just move on, on to my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> now no, no, but, um, Kevin honestly, is like now trying to figure out how old my dad is. No, I, no, I no, think it's I, easy. It's your dad's forty-five. Yeah, going, <laughs> going back to books again. Yeah, I age with the years. Going back with book smart. Um, well, I also love the tone of this movie. I think it it, it seamlessly goes in and out of oh, kind of wacky humor mm-hmm. to very very heartfelt moments between yeah. these two, and that is a very very hard thing to do. And it's very hard to do that and still make it appealing to someone like me. Mm-hmm. And I fucking loved it from start to finish. I thought they had a great use of humor. I thought the parents were hilarious shout out to was it lisa kudrow was the yeah, mom lisa shout out to lisa kudrow so for coming in and like who you know, was the dad i forget oh. it was someone someone famous i forget yeah. who it was. Yeah. i want to say was john turturro but i'm thinking not john Turturro. it's the uh, guy from um last man on earth 
Um, he's also in Thirty oh, Rock. Will, For, uh, Will yeah. uh, Fordell? Fordell? Forte. No, Will, Will Forte. Forte. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's funny as shit. But yeah, it's actually Will Fort. I, I'm sorry. No, it's Fortnite. <laughs> Uh, Jason Sudeikis and this was really funny too as the, as the principal oh, slash yeah. Uber <laughs> driver yeah. it was fun definitely watch that movie I think cool. it's on it's Amazon right it might be Hulu it it's right. on one of them it's I'm sure somewhere. Barrett will look it up <clears throat> it's, uh, it's on Hulu I had Alyssa watch it recently Tight. but I think it might have recently left Hulu or something Tight like night. It, I, it definitely is on one of the three big streaming services I think it's Amazon Studios yeah so I think that's it's what Amazon. I think yeah I think uh, it was on Amazon Joey your number six my number six we already talked about my number six. Did we? Oh. Yeah. So is, is it my number five now? Yeah, let's go to your number five, because yeah. I think I screwed up and put the art of self-defense on my list twice. So I'm going to say John Wick's not my number 10. Isn't that great? <laughs> All right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, my number five. No, Joey, it's not controversial that you put Star Wars on your list, because oh! it's my number five. Really? Man, yeah. Rise of Skywalker. I fucking loved it. Oh, my Same. God. Glad to hear that. You guys. In the first like five minutes, I was like, ah, "This is so much better." <laughs> Good. I, yeah. And is it breakneck fast speed like the entire time? Yeah. Yeah. Are do they have to jam a, lo- a, a lot of stuff in there because they're trying to make changes to the story? They're trying to fit multiple movies in there to you know yeah. But God, I like. There's so many moments where I just was like. In that movie, and um, it, watching it was phenomenal. I've, I've watched it twice. I, I really think that it makes Last Jedi a stronger movie. It makes that trilogy come together well. I got another. I'm not. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking out of Star yeah. Wars. Like, I, I vowed 2020 yeah. was the year that I just speak positively about everything that has to do with Star Wars or don't say you anything liked at all. Star Wars. You I liked Star Wars. Yeah. I liked The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I did. And, I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just... It's a cool conclusion. I just refuse to be dragged into the muck of the Last Jedi. Again. <laughs> no, yeah, no, nobody's it. talking about the Last Jedi I'm and how much it, it sucked. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, no, but uh, yeah, it was. It was. I'm really happy that it's over and that at the end of it, like I'm down to rewatch so many of these movies. Yeah, the yeah. prequels I always have to force myself through, but uh, yeah, this is like where it's like this is this is good. This is. The best that it could have been, and not only that, like I, it had such, it had several strong moments. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the chat, just goes <laughs> let him, Last let Jedi him, was let great. Him get all Last Jedi up. was terrible. Last Jedi was great. Last it Jedi doesn't matter. Terrible. It doesn't matter. None of it because matters. Because all of that on. shit got erased. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, what's who's next? I think it's uh, me. Joey, yeah. Go for I it. I think boy. right now, in the midst of this conversation, I'm gonna pull an audible and switch around my four and my five. Okay. Whoa. I think coming at five is the farewell. Okay. Which we've already talked about yep. at length. Yeah. Aquafina Man. I just the was shit. not expecting that performance after seeing her in like Crazy Rich Asians. So the first movie like that. that's hit all of our lists? I think I so. Yeah. No, so. I think yes, I think so. Yeah. Well, I think Uncup Jen's not on your list, right? I'll talk about that. Because <laughs> if that is it's on I think my it's list, on yeah. everyone's list. Yeah. Uh, but it, oh no, I haven't talked about list. it. I had it on my list. Yeah. yeah. I haven't talked about it yet. You haven't or, talked about it yet either, have you? It's high on my list. I'm just saying that the first one that we've talked about so far that's been on everyone's list. Correct. Um, the Farewell. Yeah. Great movie. So Not good. Not enough Oscar noms. Not enough Oscar noms. And you should really go watch that Hollywood Reporter video because Lulu Wang's in it and she is, I could listen to her talk forever. She's super, super interesting. And it's interesting mm-hmm. to see her go back and forth with Martin Scorsese in particular. Your number five. Uh, I think I fucked up. It's the art of self-defense. So can I go to my number four? Sure. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> Great movie. We talked about it. Yeah. Remember when uh, What's-His-Face takes his shirt off, Brad so Pitt? Good. And it's just like, you're an old man, but good God. There is, I saw so that good. movie. I believe I saw that movie with my wife mm. both times that I watched it. Did with the exception of the third. The speaking, third I watched on a plane. Speaking of wives, do you think he killed his wife? What's that? Do you think he killed his wife on purpose? Yeah, definitely. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it was... I, I, you never know. I, I don't think, know. I, I think there was a bump in the water and his finger hit it. Yeah, I think yeah. so, too. But he was definitely pointing it at her with intent. No. Um, I, there's a moment in that movie where he goes up to fix the antenna, and he takes and he has the, the beer in the, in the old in the belt. leathery belt that I think you should get yeah. for your belt. You should also go up on the roof, fix that leak, take your shirt off. Um, <laughs> so worried about when it. he took his shirt off, and I've seen it twice with my wife, three times in total. Both times with my wife, we got that scene, and she went, oh. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't it's really like, impressive. Like, do that fuck. way. I was like, like, fuck. like 50 at this point. But, like, hearing the love of your life, the person yeah. you hope to spend the rest of your life with, 
audibly put a guttural sound out that she's never used to describe <laughs> any part of your body or have a reaction to your body is that makes sense. It's something. Yeah, yeah. It's something, yeah. Kevin. Oh man. Your number five. Yeah. Have you done your? No. No. Your number four. My number four. Yeah, that's it. Peanut Butter Falcon. Oh. Finally oh. made it on there. This I thought for a long time was going to make it to my number one. Uh, it's that it's, good. It's so good. It's a heartwarming movie. Yeah, it's, it's just like a. I want to watch it. I'm trying to get D to watch it. There's so many good movies. To it's watch a feel good Oscar. movie. Like if you were like, if you had called me like, "Hey Kevin, I'm really stressed. All this shit's going down. I don't know what to do. What movie should I watch? 100 percent Peanut Butter Falcon. Okay, yeah, just I watch because it. it's just it's well acted. It made me like uh, what's your face Dakota, Dakota Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. I love it. I like Dakota Johnson. Yeah. You'll it, love her more. It yeah. honestly made me like, it made me like, like and respect. Uh, what's his Child name? Above. too? Yeah, the the Honey Boy uh-huh. just barely didn't make my cut. Yeah, but uh. Honey Boy, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to see. I thought it just mostly because not that I wasn't interested. I just thought it was gonna be really intense. It is. Um, it is. Peanut Butter Falcon is one of those that I tried to get out to see. I tried to go to the movies. I tried to it's rent it. Available it right now on Amazon. Gonna, I'm gonna watch it eventually. I yeah. highly recommend everyone out there rent it. It's real high. Up my yeah, list. like man, it was just a movie I was not expecting. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what it was going into it. And it's just, it's so good. Excellent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So my number four. Now, this is a controversial one, I'm pretty sure, because it's Endgame. Oh. Number four? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Mm. That movie gave me everything I wanted. Yep. And I, I didn't cry in the movie theater, but, like, I got damn close. And, like, it was, it, I didn't cry mostly because Gia was sitting next to me sobbing as hard as possible. You didn't uh, open mouth cry, as Andy likes to put it? Yeah. Jesus, it's no. really coming down it outside. It's like crazy yeah. windy and raining it's, outside it's right a, now. Sorry. There's a terrible rainstorm coming. But yeah, um, Endgame. A conclusion that I didn't expect to be so good. And uh, here we are. Jeez, that sounds like hail. It sure yeah. does. Um, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to... It's, it's, it's so hitting, distracting. It's hitting the glass, right? That's the sound so. we're hearing. Barrett's looking. I mean, it's like going sideways. That's yeah, like, yeah, I'm looking man. at it out of there. It is intense. It's oh. very. Can you hear it on the mics? How could uh, you not? It sounds like someone's so slamming the oh. window up above us. Chat, can you hear it on the mics? Wow, you can hear the rain on the stream. Says uh, yeah, Dang. Josh. Two, yeah, zero, it's getting two, really one. intense. Yeah, but let's continue forward. End Wait, game, yeah. Okay, end game, yeah. Also is on my list. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was scared that you guys hadn't put it on there. No, it's on. Okay. It's on my list at least. Um, it's so. So I w- what I will say is that while I was in The Rise of Skywalker, as much as I liked it, mm. while I was in it, when I when it got towards the end, I was like, man, I have so much respect for the work that Marvel puts in yeah. to have a similar, like, end final prestige movie and to just nail it on, like, every single Every point. single front. Yeah. For me, Rise of Skywalker, I went in hoping it would be have the emotional impact of Endgame. And... It did to a degree, but not for the same reasons. It, it had an impact on me because it was the end of something that started before I was born mm-hmm. and something mm-hmm. I grew up with. And so when I was watching the movie sort of come to a conclusion, I had a, I had a very intense emotion of, of sadness and happiness and all, all those mixed together because, because I thought it was, you know, it's the end of an era. Yeah. Endgame's different. Endgame was the end of an era, but done so perfectly and done with so much taste and class and with such a uniformity throughout all 22 movies that you can't help but think this Not is... Not all of them, but... Well, but I mean, the, yeah. the storytelling was fairly solid. The hints that were laid out. And what's more important is that everyone was on the same page and, and all the stories play well with each other and build into this thing that I don't think we're ever going to see again, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. And when you're watching that... I cannot tell you. I remember, I remember watching that in theaters, sitting next to Andrew Rene. It was it was me and Andrew Rene and John Drake and D were on opposite sides of us, and they are they are heartless creatures because me and Andrew <laughs> were crying the entire fucking time, and mm-hmm. it was such an emotional roller coaster, and it felt so good, and it was who so knew, sad at the same time. Who knew that comic yeah. book movie could be so goddamn? Uh, good. And I cried at the so end bad. of Rise of Skywalker because not, but out of happiness that I don't have to fucking debate Star Wars anymore. <laughs> that debate will never end. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, your number four, or is it your, my number three? It's I already did my number four. Okay, so great. I don't know. So it's my number three. Mm-hmm. Is Jojo Rabbit? This is now the third movie that I came out of. So I forgot to mention this, but when I came out of Endgame, I was like, "No way, anything beats that on my list." Right. Yeah. That's the best goddamn movie ever made. Yep. And I think this might be the order of of release where I came out of Jojo Rabbit. Uh, no, I guess it doesn't matter. 
Uh, it came out of Jojo Rabbit, and I was like, no way any fucking movie is better than that. Because yeah. Jojo Rabbit, we talked about it at length. It's a great goddamn movie. Yep. Everyone should watch it. It's my number three. I can't believe that it's so low on my list. Or so hot. Like, you know? Yeah. I it thought it was going to be down more. by yeah. so many other yeah. things. Yeah. It's a good goddamn year. It's so Joey, what's good. your number three? My number three is... It's a great question. Um... Parasite. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. Gotta see this movie. Yeah. it's I've seen it twice now. The first time I like had kind of mixed feelings about it because I went into I don't remember much about the trailer, but I went into it thinking it was like straight horror. Mm-hmm. And then I was like very kind of yeah, confused. Don't, I don't want to know age. anything about this yeah. movie. I haven't yeah. watched yeah. it. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah, if that's okay. Um, I can walk out for the discussion. No, 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 no. no. It, it's not it's very really it's way the more less like, you know, the better it yeah, is. It's um, not horror, it's way more like just suspenseful. I feel like the second time watching it will be like because I've only watched it once at this yeah. point. Like I'll get more out of it. It is yeah. masterful, I feel yeah. like, on every level of just like yeah. not really knowing where the story's going and then it all kind of converges and you're like, oh man, and it's I don't even know what else to say about it because I just want people to go see it and I don't want you to know anything about it. Deal. Um, also, if you want to see it again, it maybe didn't, let me down. It didn't make my list, but it was also so I'll damn see, close. Okay. Where honestly, it could, it really could be in the last three. It's just again very tough year. Yeah, and like honestly, I'm not usually a huge fan of seeing films with subtitles, but like there's something about having to like read what's going on that mm-hmm. keeps you really engaged. And so maybe I've changed yeah. my mind on that. It certainly really helped with our crowd, where yeah. we had a crowd of people, a bunch of hooligans. They were all rowdy. Uh, and as soon as subtitles came up, they all had to shut up. Everyone was, and it was silent. Very Can't talk and read at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how your brain works. Nicholas, yeah. your number three? Uh, my number three was Book Smart, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, I loved it. Great we talked movie. for all the reasons yep. we talked about. So definitely watch that. Yeah. So Book Smart is another movie that has made all of our lists. Yeah, it's so good. I'm like, dude, directorial debut for Olivia Wilde, right? Mm-hmm. Super good for impressive. Her. Good for her. And, also, uh, the shout soundtrack out to for Denver. that is so good. Or De- Denver's? Caitlin Devers, I think is her name. Devers. Devers. Yeah. She's fucking awesome. If you have I liked her ever since I saw her in season two of Justified. Yeah. She mm-hmm. did that Netflix series, Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. That, that was supposed to be really good. She was incredible. In is, that. It, is this the best friend? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, fun, uh, she's the main character. Beanie Feldstein's the best friend. Um, I think you have flipped. They're best friends. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're both <laughs> main characters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think she, uh, she also plays the daughter of Nathan Drake in Uncharted 4, which oh, was yeah, a yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Where are we at? Um, uh, Nicholas, you're number two. Uncut Ooh. Gems. Oh, I think this is one of those movies where I'm like, I just need everyone to know how awesome this movie is. And it is unsettling and it is fucked up. And Adam Sandler should get an Academy Award for this. Absolutely. If there is a, if there is a, a any fairness in Hollywood whatsoever, which I know there's not because it's all political and it's all based on money and they all have campaigns Politics, and award man. shows are complete bullshit. But I like to think that there's someone out there that goes, despite whatever feelings you have about any of what I just said, this movie is, his acting in this movie is fucking phenomenal. And it's to the point where I was not, I, I've lamented about actors who get to a certain level of fame. Right. And then you they just can never disappear in a role anymore. Right. And Adam Sandler, I would have thought, was that. And then you start watching Uncut Gems and about, I don't know, 15 minutes and you go, oh shit, that's Adam Sandler. Yeah. Like I forgot that I'm watching an Adam Sandler movie because he's so it's, fucking good as this unbelievably unlikable but slightly lovable character. Yeah. It's a complex movie. Again, a shout out to Julia Fox, who I think this is a breakout role for her. She it, needs to be I feel like it has amazing. to be. Yeah. Shout out to Kevin Garnett. Right. Who I did. I was like, oh, they recast Kevin Garnett because this guy's fucking awesome. Yeah, and then no. I Googled and then you just said it. And then I Googled it. I was like, shit, that was Kevin Garnett. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And I've seen like the only other God, time I've ever seen so many times. anyone do anywhere, any, any, any athlete that's come close to that was when uh, LeBron James was in uh, Trainwreck. As oh, remember how he just right. had a random cameo, you're yeah. like, he's actually really funny in this. Yeah. But he's just kind of goofy. And this one, Kevin Garnett's like fucking intense. He's yeah. actually a pretty good actor. So I don't know. We're, we're, that was my number two, and I think everyone should go see it. I agree. And we should all we should all uh boycott the Academy Awards unless we decide to do an Academy Awards stream, in which case sure. also let's true, all sure. dress up and get snacks. <gasps> okay. Mm-hmm. My turn? Yep. Number two. I feel like on any day, my one and my two could flip flop around, but my number two is little women. Oh, it's a great movie. So good. So well, historically, when we were talking about Little Women, I was like, I don't give a fuck about this movie. I don't care anything really about the story. Like it wasn't like a huge like moment in my childhood. Like, oh, I loved Little Women. Um, it's so but, funny because D for D it was, and she was mm-hmm. like, it's sacrilege to to do another Little Women. Did she watch so, it? I think she went saw it. I think she, she thought it was okay, but she loves really the like original it. like nineties version, oh, not the original with, like, version. Like Winona. Yeah, the Winona Ryder. Susan Sarandon. Yeah, she loves that yeah. version. I think it's really good. 
But this one just hit uh, for me on so many levels. I like that they break up the storytelling so it's not linear. And they kind of do some time jumps, which is a little bit confusing at the beginning. She's Greta Gerwig, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah she's Greta Gerwig. Uh, the, she did the screenplay as well. Uh, Saoirse Ronan, who was the main girl in Lady, Lady Bird, Bird, plays yeah. Joe, and she's incredible. Then you have Emma Watson as Meg. Um, this is the first time I've ever cared about Amy, which is uh, Florence. <sighs> Everyone hates Amy. Pew. Every, no, it's girl? true. No. That's the other one. That's oh. Beth. Florence Pugh. Oh, yeah. That was very unfortunate. Because yeah. it's like Amy's second fiddle to Joe, you know? Well, no. Amy's movie, the apparently. youngest one. And, like, she's the one that, like, burns Joe's book. And, like, oh, wait, don't wait, spoil wait. it for Amy, me. I haven't seen Amy the was woman the youngest yet. one? She's I know. not the second? No. Oh, interesting. She's I thought young. that the sick girl was the, second, no. the youngest one. No. She's I mean, I don't think it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, God. But this that, is the, the... The end of that movie is so, like... Ah, yeah. no! Well, not the end, but like the last like what thirty minutes? Yeah, where like stuff starts happening and it's just like ah. Um, movie was good, was so it's good, so good. The acting, everybody in it is so, so good. So good. The Except one, for Laura Dern, she fucking no, sucks. she's How so good in this. God, phenomenal. I will say that there was one thing that she's made no me laugh Hathaway. out loud in this movie, and that's that Bob Odenkirk shows up as the dad. And I was like, why is yeah. that? Yeah, D said that, that was, was weird. Really casting. That was that w- that was the only thing that like super took me out of the movie. But Florence Pugh as Amy like kind of explaining why mm-hmm. the character is why she is and it was like oh this is the first time i've ever understood really her motivations or like cared about her even a little bit and she's so good uh the little sister is from sharp o- or the third sister i can't remember her name but um, the sick girl oh wait yeah yeah the sick girl. she's beth yeah but she's from sharp objects with amy adams then you have timothy chalamet which is like laurie so probably thunder. i know in the <laughs> most likable yeah. like iteration i think yeah um and he, the scene of him and joe in the field going back and forth is so good like and then you have meryl streep like oh yeah i forgot meryl streep yeah. is also no. in this movie who was the like neighbor uh tom oh uh, i don't Timothee's remember what his dad. name is but he Doesn't was matter. also chris something but i don't remember what he was also so good and like good acting different there's everywhere so many yeah. like uh there's one scene that i can picture that's like one perfect shot if you follow that Twitter account that just yeah. shows this. I was like, yeah. oh, that's so funny. Chris that, Cooper? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That was a real tough one that not making my list. And yeah. that's why I w- wanted to make sure to put it in honorable mentions. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. I'm glad that it got nominated for Best Picture. I don't think it's necessarily going to win. It's kind of a weird category this year, but we'll talk about that later. I just like that Florence Pugs doing stuff. Yeah. I like her. Well, yeah. the fact that she was in she cool. this and she had Midsummer, which are like two yeah. wildly different roles. Very different roles. Good for her. Um, I really, and then she's going to be in Black Widow. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be. I'm so excited. I really like. Get her. it done, kind of Florence Pug. Her. It's Florence Pew. Whatever. I call her Pug. I like yeah, Pug. I uh, Pew. My number Pew's two. Terrible. <laughs> They're both terrible. It's a terrible last name. Pew is the sound you make when someone. Nick. Toots. I'm doing my number two. <laughs> Go for it. It's the Peanut Butter Falcon. Okay. When I watched this movie, I was like, "This is my number one movie." Yeah. And I loved it. Love it so much. I recently. Mm, did I buy it or rent it? I don't know. I had I was I was watching it recently and it's just like probably my fourth time watching it and it's just like God this movie is it just fills me with happiness and joy mm-hmm. and I can't like it, I know it's a small movie it had a small release but like people need to watch this movie just because it's so powerful and fun and yeah. beautiful really beautiful is the right word yeah yeah it's yeah it's, we've talked about it enough oh, so we don't good. have to keep talking about I it I know that's what's hard me yeah. to get to these top yeah, ones yeah 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 <sighs> have now you done your number two. Oh no. uh, yeah, my oh, yeah. I'm doing. I'm gems. doing my number one right now. Yeah, Ooh, go for it. Boy. My number one is Uncut Gems. Yeah. Damn, one of the last movies that I saw <laughs> in 2019, and yeah. it's just when a movie can stress you out that much, it's doing something so right, you know. Yeah. And like that's just I did. I went to watch the movie because Nick, you had said that it was one of the best movies. Uh, I think Makuga had also been like, "Oh, you gotta watch it. It's so good." And I was like, these guys are wrong. There's no way this movie's yeah. going to be my number one. And here I am. Because it's just like, I did not. It's so stressful. That movie is so stressful. It seems long, but also goes by very fast. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's dealing with that stress. There's so many times where I was like gripping the seat, being like, why doesn't this dude just give him back yeah. the rock? Fuck, give him the just rock. Give him the rock. <laughs> this is the time where yeah. like I was checking my watch to see what time it was. Not because it felt long, but because I was like, I can't handle. <laughs> like I need to know how much time this movie has I, left. It's been so long since a movie has done that. W- yeah. Where I just, it's 
fully removed me from the movie theater. Or like the only times I'm like purposely putting myself back in the mindset of like, it's just a movie. Barrett, it's just a movie, right? And Barrett's like, we're all going to die. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, to me, like, I find I find the subject matter like so unsettling to begin with because realistically what we're talking about is like kind of addiction mm -hmm. where he is addicted to gambling, he's yeah. addicted to this lifestyle and then like to be along for that ride and to feel out of control is such a unique thing for yep. the for the for the filmmakers to have done. Yeah. And to nail it and to be that that la the last scene as the movie gets into the climax and you just feel like you it's have to be a, like you're stuck here and as a spectator mm -hmm. watching this it's unsettling it's a crazy piece of art to, to have to go through yeah. yeah i like it i i for me i thought it was really impressive of like how much you get stressed out but then like when he gets his high you also feel you that high, high and you understand like why he keeps chasing it and why he keeps ma making bets. Yeah. And then the the commentary that the movie makes like this was a movie where yeah I was like way too stressed out and it was like not like a good day and like I was already like in a mood but then like the last like fifteen minutes that movie like came together for me and I was like oh shit like the way they build up to things is really really great. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. I get stressed just thinking about it. I know, I know. <laughs> Joey, what is your number one movie of 2019? So I feel like over the course of the year, I've like wrestled with this so hard because Wrestle. my number one oh, is man. Endgame. Wow, yes! that's awesome! I know. Joey! All right, but that's it's awesome. like so. This is my pro. This is my issue with Endgame. Of like, is it fair to have Endgame as my number one movie because it has 15, <laughs> however many years, 21 yeah, movies before it and coming 10 together? Years? Is it and, fair that I'm your favorite because I had four years come together? <laughs> I mean, whatever, right? You know? 40. 40. 40. What did I say? Four. Um, but I like, I had to say 30. I, <laughs> but it's just, so it's like, I understand that it's almost unfair to put Endgame at my number one because it had such a buildup that like most of these other movies, except for maybe like Rise of Skywalker. Um, right. That, is the only one that had this kind of much sort of buildup. That's time advantage. But it was that thing of when I was sitting and we had finished The Rise of Skywalker and I was like, man, I just have such an appreciation for what Marvel did with this whole saga that like, and it hit, it was fun, it was funny, it was like emotional, like there, it was just kind of hit on every single thing for me and I can't not put it in my number one yeah. this year. My number one. Is also Avengers Endgame. Oh, hey, yeah. right, you guys, that's it's, awesome. The movie is, yeah, yeah, yeah. is as close to perfect as it's going to get for, for me. Like I, I, I to mirror to echo everything Joey just said. Yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you can hold that against it. I think that is, that is an exemplary. Uh, it's a perfect example of what filmmakers should strive to do if you're going to make. Uh, a, a series like this is that you need to get everyone on the same page. You need to have everyone have heart and passion for the projects. You need to find unique voices that you can come and, and ha they can bring unique viewpoints into this stuff. For Taiko Atiti coming in, um, in, in in sort of the eleventh hour and really helping to find the Thor character yeah. made Endgame so much better because his emotional arc in this movie is so much, is made so much more powerful by that. Right, you actually care about his relationship to his mom. You actually care about Thor, and you actually care God. like when each of the three of the main characters square off against Thanos at the end, you give a fuck so badly about all three of those people and you know they're gonna die. You know someone's gonna die. You're like, there's they can't beat this guy. They even yeah. say it. They're like, you know this is a trap, right? And he goes, yep. I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go fuck this guy up, right? When he gets the hammer, it's so good. There's so There's many, so many. But great like, it also, how crazy is that we have the moment with Thor and Frigga, and it's like nobody gave a fuck about this movie. Like the uh, uh, Thor two, yeah, or yeah. Dark World. Yeah, Dark dude, World. they made Dark World cool. Yeah, they they, they, they really give did. a powerful moment to yeah. Dark World, and I love it too because it's just like the even the movies you didn't think mattered in this mm -hmm. do have an impact, and I was like, damn. Yeah, I mean, this was this was this must have been just. Very, very difficult to get all together on the page and yeah. to get all these actors together, and, but they nailed it. And they've had <laughs> they've had this uniform vision from from pretty much day one, or at least phase one, I should say. And having it actually work out like this is just something so special. And I think it needs to be on everyone's. It needs to be the top of everyone's list. Yeah. Um, Kevin, you're a monster for not putting it number one. I put it at my number one. Just to let you guys Thanks, know. Thanks, We're yeah. team. We're I, team I'm actually, over here. guys. I'm really happy because I was scared that you guys were, like. I, I I was shocked that it had not. Come up, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. and literally, there's been yeah. so many times. Every plane ride I've taken, yeah. when I finished the movie and I've got an extra 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I just 
scroll to that part where he tightens the shield. Mm -hmm. I just, oh, I just yeah. let go. I'm like, uh, Here we go, and I okay. fucking cry every time. People yeah. think I'm crazy on plane flights because for two hours or three hours I was totally fine, and then in the last thirty <laughs> minutes I start g sobbing. People are like, "What's wrong with this old man?" Yeah, I mean, I, I love that movie. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, like putting together this list has been so hard because those last six movies are just. They they were all my number ones for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's tough too because you know this movie obviously is, it's I, I don't want to say it's a little bit of a cheat, but it is. Uh, there no, is there's, there's a lot so more much baggage. Well, there's a lot more emotion yeah. built into it because we're also saying goodbye to some oh, of these Jesus. actors yeah. oh, to a degree. Right. I don't really think that. So I think they're no, going to get no, Robert Downey Jr. back I, somehow. I, but like RDJ is gone. Uh, what's his, uh, Chris Evans. Evans is gone. Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. Although it's still in Black Widow, is for all intents and purposes, and the main story arc's gone. Yeah. Going so, forward, yeah. Going forward. So that is, there's a lot of that too. But there, it's very rare that you can make a movie that bids a fond farewell to these actors, and it feels so gratifying, even yeah. though you're letting, you have to let this thing go. Yeah. And that's the power of Endgame. And it for felt me. like it all felt right for those characters in the way that it all yeah. kind of culminated. You get to the end, you go, I don't want this character to die, but I understand that he has to. Right. And yeah. that's, and, and she has to, right? And I, it's just like, it's so good. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to do the out uh, now on streaming platforms. Can I, we do, have... can I do the song that I wrote for you? Out now on streaming platforms. Fuck, I was so <laughs> against it, but I know I love it. Uh, That's how you got... do it, Barrett. <laughs> Little, no, let, let Grandpa Nick show you how to fighting. do it. Stop <laughs> fighting. Uh, on Netflix, The Master is out, something, a movie I've wanted to watch for a while. Uh, which one's that That's one? That's the Philip Seymour Hoffman one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. About that Scientology? Was like, no, yeah. not Scientology. Uh, no. Uh, Phil, uh, um, it's like religion. It is Scientology. It's, uh, Howard. Yeah. The, the, the guy that Howard, Hubbard, yeah. 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 Uh, and then there's yeah. a, a, a trailer that I watched called Skeleton Twins. We, we I think, brought it up a while ago. It's uh, Bill Hader, Kristen Wiig, and Luke Wilson. Oh, oh I like uh, all those people. Yeah. Bill Hader is Kristen Wiig's brother, uh -huh. and it's I th he's been trying to do, be an actor, and he's come back home as like kind of failed that's kind of fun. and now he's trying to like kind of live with them and it's about the relationship it looks really cool it's called the skeleton twins that <laughs> is on both amazon prime and hulu so you mm. have plenty of options to watch that looked interesting just wanted to throw that out there cool beans love it um out in movie theaters uh near you we've got bad boys for life and Fuck yes, we do. do little with a Rotten Tomato score of thirteen yeah, percent, oh the trailer, like the Our trailer DJ of that movie, looks vendors. like somebody. It looks bad. That's never yeah. edited, put it together. It's yeah. so bad looking. All right, and then last week I asked you for your top three favorite movies of 2019. Give it to us, Kev. What are the people saying? So many people wrote in. I'm unfortunately I won't be able to give read the, them all. Give the people say. Uh, Liam talks about says for my favorite three movies. Uh, sorry, let me like he, he wrote a lot. Uh, his his issue is though he lives in Australia a bunch of movies that haven't come out there oh. uh, Lighthouse Honey Boy and Peanut Butter Falcon have yet to come out there mm. but he, his three picks are Knives Out Parasite and Marriage Story very respectable list very respectable list Jeremy Z says Jojo Rabbit uh, Avengers Endgame and Joker oh yeah. interesting no, no, no. Joker first mention of Joker now. Available to rent finally as of last week. So yes, I have to watch that. Right. I have to watch it. Uh, Andrew Feisner says, Endgame, I want to eat your pancreas. Okay. And never surrender a Galaxy Quest documentary. Interesting. I would be I down really to watch, watch that. that. I, I love watch Galaxy Quest. I, I don't know why they made a documentary about Galaxy Quest, but I want to down. Quest, right? God damn it. It's oh, it's so amazing, good. but yeah. it's just one standalone random Tim Allen movie. <laughs> hey, but you know uh, what? Sigourney That's where Beaver Sam too. Rockwell got his fucking break. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do I? Do I? <laughs> I want to look at... You I'm have a last name. Do I? <laughs> uh, about our Alberto God. Lopez, a.k.a. Poseidon, sends Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Irishman, and Booksmart. Interesting. I cannot believe I people like, like the Irishman. I, I, I feel can't like I'm judge. going crazy. I can't judge because I haven't watched it yet. Like, honestly, I'll talk. I, I'm going to break I, it down for you right now. My hatred of The Departed has been far trumped up. We don't have time for it. We, we don't have time. far trumped up. Let's, but The Irishman is legitimately week, a bad week movie. Next week, we can talk about it. All right. Um... How would you say that first name? Abdias? Yeah. Abdias Ramirez uh, says Far From Home. Oh. Which is a good one. I honestly kind of heard of King of Yeah, I know. Endgame and John Wick 3. Oh, John Wick 3. John Wick 3. Halibut, uh, he, well, he wrote, it doesn't matter. Uh, Wesley LeBlanc says Endgame, Booksmart, and Booksmart again. Booksmart is that good. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and for next week's bronze topic, what are your? Oh, I didn't write it down, so that didn't match. What are? You, what's your most anticipated 2020 movie? Because next week is all about 
movies that are coming out in 2020 and what we're excited for, what we're going to do a review for when it comes out. All of that next week. I'm excited. Yeah. So a lot of good sounds, stuff coming out. Yeah, this year. a lot of great stuff. A lot of good stuff last year. What an exciting time to be watching movies. You I'm know? excited. I love yeah. it. I'm still, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think you'd make it to 40, but here it's you great, are, baby. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Bad boys for life tonight. Uh, Daddy's gonna get a giant popcorn, giant diet coke. We're just gonna go in. Please it. stop calling yourself daddy. Uh, you can follow us on social media. Uh, you can follow Nick at Nick underscore Scarpino. You can follow Joey at Joey Noel. You can follow me at Kind of Funny Kevin. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Go and watch Endgame because it's a damn good movie.